There was a boundless mainland where humans used many methods to cultivate heavenly energy. The humans born there possessed an innate jewel. However, no one was certain what their jewel would be. After they attained the third layer of heavenly energy in their cultivation, they would awaken their power jewel. They would then cease being ordinary human beings and become jewel masters. Power jewels had two forms. The jewels that were awakened on the right hand were known as physical jewels. Those who possessed them were known as physical jewel masters. The jewels granted them incredible physical strength, stamina, and agility. Physical jewels could also transform into weapons or armor, giving further enhancements. The other form of power jewel was the elemental jewel, which was awakened on the left hand. Elemental jewel masters had the power to control elements and possessed many mysterious skills. The few who could awaken both forms of power jewels were called heavenly jewel masters. Not everyone was able to cultivate heavenly energy. Those that were unable to do so were born with blocked meridians. On the outskirts of Heavenly Bow Empire's capital city, the Heavenly Bow City, there was a forest known as Star Forest. A young lad, who looked to be around 15 or 16 years old, walked along the forest boulevard. He muttered to himself the fallacies that filled his mind. He had a cheerful smile and laughed because he had run from his overbearing father. His name was Joe Wei King. He lamented his inability to cultivate, saying it was a waste considering his good looks. However, he reconsidered and thought it wasn't bad that he could not cultivate. His father, whom he had run away from, still made him exercise every day. Zhou Wei King feared matters would have been worse if he could cultivate. He preferred his life as the son of a high-ranking official in the empire. Instead of exercising in the hot weather, he much preferred to soak in a cool spring for half a day. He beamed with excitement when he found what he had been looking for. He immediately got rid of his clothes and jumped in. The refreshing water made him smile in a carefree manner. His vanity was revealed when he admired his reflection on the water's surface. He suddenly heard a sound and quietly hid among the reeds to observe his surroundings. His expression became lecherous when he saw a beautiful young woman taking a bath. He had an instant nosebleed when his eyes fell on her flawless form. He shed tears of joy and thought he would die without regrets if the sight before him were his last. Suddenly, a shout broke the silence. Zhou Wei King nearly jumped out of his skin when he heard it. The voice addressed the girl as royalty and asked her to hide because someone else was there with them. Zhou Wei King nervously scanned his surroundings and instinctively kept his head low. The peeping Tom had been found. He saw a woman at the shore. The voice belonged to her. She was clad in armor and wielded a sword in her right hand. She sternly demanded to know his identity. Zhou Wei King noticed the woman had three jewels hovering above her right hand. The woman ordered him to stop staring and get out of the water. Otherwise, she would eliminate him. Zhou Wei King stood up in a panic and begged for his life to be spared. The woman was shocked to see he had no pants and angrily threatened him. The strength of jewel masters could be distinguished by the number of jewels they possessed. However, one could only possess a maximum of nine power jewels of any form. The power scaling of jewel masters ran from the lower physical master, or a lower elemental master, to the upper physical grandmaster, or upper elemental grandmaster rank. The lowest rank had one power jewel and the highest had nine. Zhou Wei King pleaded with the royal guard, an upper physical master, to spare his life. He swore that it had all been a misunderstanding. The royal guard considered him audacious for daring to peep at others while they bathed. She ordered him to stop spouting nonsense and asked what he had been doing besides peeping. He explained that he had come to the spring to bathe as well. He argued that a peeping Tom would never undress. Therefore, he was not a pervert. The royal guard said his fate was not hers to decide. When she referred to the girl as Her Highness... Zhou Wei King asked whether she was referring to Princess Di Fu Ya. The princess had finished dressing up and joined the conversation. She asked whether Zhou Wei King recognized her. Zhou Wei King and the princess recognized each other immediately. He was relieved to discover that she was the princess he knew. He then asked the royal guard to release him. When the princess recognized him, her tone became cold and arrogant. She called him trash and asked the royal guard to execute him. Zhou Wei King was perplexed. He asked why the princess would not allow the royal guard to release him. When he saw the royal guard brandishing the sword, he revealed he was the princess's fiancé. The royal guard was stunned. The princess, however, said she would never accept such a useless person and repeated her order for his execution and said she would take full responsibility. The royal guard immediately recognized who the young man was. He was Viscount Zhou, the son of Grandmaster Zhou Shui Niu. The royal guard attempted to mediate the situation, but her efforts bore no fruit. The young man before her was a viscount and should not be harmed. The princess ordered her to be silent. 
she declared that she did not have such a fiancé and that her husband ought to be the cream of the crop and a hero above all. Perverted and filthy trash like Joe Wei King could never match her standards. The boy's eyes narrowed in anger. He then laughed sarcastically and asked, so what if he had been accused of peeping on the princess? No one within the Heavenly Bow Empire could see her body. However, he was her fiancé, and it did not matter. The princess had only been born in a better environment and only had slightly better talent. His words were as bitter as gall to the princess. She gritted her teeth in anger. Zhou Wei King's mouth, however, curled into a sneer. He continued to say the princess still had to marry perverted and filthy trash like himself. Were it not for his blocked meridians, he wouldn't have peeped at her even if she openly let him. He said he would never want to marry someone as prideful as her. The princess's eyes flared in anger. Joe Waking said if it weren't to give his godfather some face, he wouldn't even give her a piece of his mind. At that point, Princess Difu Ya could no longer contain the rage within her heart. She shouted as a bright orange aura erupted from her body. Two elemental jewels appeared from her left hand, and a brilliant flame gathered in her left palm. Joe Waking's eyes widened in shock. He could not believe that the princess would be so heavy-handed. These thoughts filled his mind as a huge fireball flew toward him and exploded. The impact obliterated the tree he was bound to. The devastating impact of the fireball blew Joe Wei King's body away. The royal guard had shouted to stop the princess, but it was too late. Joe Wei King crashed on the ground dozens of meters away and spat a mouthful of blood. Princess Di Fu Ya retracted her left hand and watched in shock. The fireball had scorched Joe Wei King's skin. His body trembled. He tried cursing the princess, but words could barely form. His voice was too weak and his consciousness had started fading. The princess sobbed in horror when she saw the destruction her impulsive outburst had wrought. She did not mean to kill the Viscount. Her royal guard looked at Zhou Wei King as he inched closer to his demise with each passing moment. Unfortunately, neither the royal guard nor the princess was a life elemental jewel master. The royal guard was relieved that there were no witnesses in the vicinity. She shook the princess out of her stupor and comforted her. She knew the princess did not injure the Viscount deliberately. Princess Di Fu Ya frantically suggested that they go to the palace and return with a healer. However, the royal guard pulled her away. Zhou Wei King's vision grew darker as he watched the silhouettes of the princess and the guard fading into the distance. He spat more mouthfuls of blood and cursed the princess for her vicious scheme. They had left him for dead. He bitterly gritted his teeth as he felt his consciousness slipping away. His heart was full of unwillingness. He had not even married yet and there were many other things he still wanted to do. Dark clouds had gathered, and rumbling thunder filled the sky. Suddenly a flash of lightning came, and a loud shattering sound echoed in the sky. It was as if space itself had shattered. Zhou Wei King gazed at the fissure in the sky with lifeless eyes. He thought he was hallucinating in his final moments. A black jewel descended from the fissure and shot into his head in a flash. Zhou Wei King's eyes flew open as he felt an overwhelming power filling his body. The pain was unbearable, and he screamed in agony. Dark patterns appeared on his face and extended along his arms, torso, and legs. Dark energy swirled around his body and suspended it in midair. The wild flow of the dark energy withered the nearby plant on contact. Zhou Wei King's mouth and eyes were filled with white brilliance, and a symbol appeared on his forehead. The pillar of light quickly disappeared, and the sky returned to its normal appearance. Zhou Wei King's body absorbed the remainder of the dark energy, and something miraculous happened. The burns on his skin started healing rapidly. His broken body was restored in mere moments. Zhou Wei King continued to lie on the ground with his eyes shut. He had escaped death and had been reborn. He opened his eyes and sat up. His mind was flooded with images from his near-death experience. He recalled the black jewel descending from the sky and wondered whether it had all been a dream. He scanned the area and saw that the plants around him had withered. It seemed he had not been dreaming after all. He noticed his injuries had healed and wondered whether the black jewel had done it. Zhou Wei King beamed joyfully over his outrageous luck, which allowed him to escape death. He found his scattered clothes and wore them. He wondered whether he had gained some power after the black jewel entered his body. He wanted to test his strength and found an enormous tree that suited him. With a confident smile, he clenched his right fist and threw a punch. His fist trembled slightly as it rested against the tree at the point of collision. He howled in pain and regretted overestimating himself. Zhou Wei King was disappointed because he thought the black jewel would allow him to obtain heavenly energy. He decided to return home, but became reluctant 
and changed his mind when he thought about the possibility of the princess slandering him. His dad would likely be furious with him. Zhou Weiking racked his brain and wondered where else he could go. He had a few gold coins left and would starve in a few days. He tearfully cursed the princess for his predicament. He once again considered returning home. He could always run away with his father's money if the situation weren't good. On the way, he considered finding his godfather, the emperor. Back at the tree, a brilliant light flashed at the point of impact. The large tree trembled as dark energy swirled around it and withered the surrounding bushes. The tree trunk shattered and fell with a loud crash. Zhou Wei King finally arrived at the entrance of Sky Bow City. He hesitated to enter at the thought that his dad might already be waiting for him. Many people gathered at the city's entrance, making him wonder if something had happened. Zhou Wei King drew closer to the crowd and went to the front because he wanted to see the source of the commotion. Before him was a Sky Bow City military recruitment desk. Suddenly it dawned on him. He could join the army. He did not have to return home after all, nor would he starve to death. He could make a name for himself on the battlefield. His dad would never call him useless again. The heavens were truly on his side. Zhou Wei King had an enthusiastic expression when he was next in line. When he said he wanted to enlist, he was asked about the service he wanted to join. The recruiter noticed his enthusiasm. He explained that people could choose the different services within the army, and each service received different benefits. Zhou Wei King calmed down and considered his options. The infantry was too dangerous. Moreover, he did not have heavenly energy. The logistics service would not enter the battlefield, and his father would find him a bigger embarrassment if he joined. He wanted a safe service that could still face enemies on the battlefield. It finally occurred to him. He belonged to the Heavenly Bow Empire, so naturally, he wanted to be an archer. The recruiter complimented him on his excellent choice and asked for his name and age. Zhou Weiking realized he could not use his name because it was relatively well known. Moreover, his father would find him if he used his real name. As for his age, according to army regulations, he would have to be at least 16 years old. However, presently he was only 13. He had a tall body frame, so the army would be in the dark if he lied. Therefore, his new name would be Zhou Xiaopang, and he said he had just become 16. The recruiter gave him a form and asked him to proceed to the examination area. The boy had managed to bluff his way in. He found a man seated in the examination area and explained that he had come for the archery exam. The exam officer was a middle-aged man with gray hair. He commended Zhou Wei King for his choice of archery and said he had a bright future. He cautioned, however, that the archery exam was extremely difficult, and one must know how to use a bow. He gave Zhou Wei King a starwood longbow, the Empire's specialty. Its toughness was high and an average person could not draw it. Zhou Wei King immediately realized why it was said that the examination was difficult. However, he was not an average person. He was Heavenly Bow Empire's Marshal Zhou's son. The exam officer was impressed by how easily Zhou Wei King drew the bow and welcomed the boy into the archery battalion. Zhou Wei King asked whether he had passed the exam. The exam officer replied affirmatively. He explained that Zhou Wei King handled the weapon with the strength and posture of a professional. It was clear that he had some experience in archery. Zhou Wei King explained that his father always urged him to practice archery. Since Zhou Wei King could not cultivate heavenly energy from childhood, his father always supervised his daily archery training. The boy unconsciously shed tears as he recalled those days of arduous training. The officer informed him that they were part of the 5th Regiment of the 3rd Battalion. He added that Zhou Wei King was lucky to have enlisted with them. Zhou Wei King wondered what the officer meant. The officer only said he would understand once he saw their battalion's commander, who was presently giving out new military equipment. The officer told him to head north towards the barracks to meet the commander. Zhou Wei King soon arrived at the barracks and stood before a long white curtain hanging over the entrance, eagerly waiting to collect his military equipment. He stretched out his hand, touched the curtain, and was surprised to feel something soft in his hand. He grew curious because not only was the sensation soft, but springy. Suddenly he received a strong blow to his abdomen, and an angry shout was heard. A beautiful woman emerged from behind the curtain. She had long white hair and bright, beautiful eyes. She was flustered and crossed her arms over her chest as she asked who he was. Zhou Wei King sat on the ground in a daze, wondering what had happened. Once he regained his wits, he instantly recognized the woman standing before him. She was Heavenly Bow Empire's number one beauty, Shang Guan Bing Er. Zhou Wei King met her once before when she was awarded a noble title. Shang Guang Bing Er was born a commoner. However, she was Heavenly Bow Empire's second Heavenly Jewel Master. 
The first was Zhou Wei King's father, Marshal Zhou Shui Niu. Binger had an outstanding talent which she chose to further hone by joining the army. The entire army camp at Skybo City worshipped her as a goddess. At that moment, Zhou Wei King realized what his examiner meant. He was flustered when he realized what his hand had felt earlier. He got another nosebleed at the thought which angered Binger. She drew her sword and shouted, asking about his identity. Zhou Wei King hurriedly took out his registration form while explaining that he was a recruit and that the earlier incident had been a misunderstanding. Binger snatched the form and examined it. She realized Zhou Wei King was telling the truth. However, she could not help but feel angry because of what he did. She yelled at him again, saying his clumsy bumbling drove her nuts. Zhou Wei King was relieved to see her reaction. She seemed to have calmed down. In his eyes, Binger seemed to have a good character and was a thousand times better than the arrogant Princess Di Fu Ya. Binger asked him to follow her. He felt awkward when he noticed the numerous eyes angrily watching him. He had made one mistake and felt like he had become a public enemy. She asked an adjutant to get Zhou Wei King a set of new equipment and make him disappear from her sight. Zhou Wei King received a pair of uniforms and a bow. He was then asked to return the following day, having dressed in the uniform. He was warned that tardiness was punishable by military law. He turned to the battalion commander Binger and realized she had already left. When he turned to leave, Binger shot him another glance and snorted angrily. Zhou Wei King decided to look for a place to try on his uniform. He hoped it would look good on him. As the son of Marshal Zhou, he always wanted to own an army uniform. He found a washroom within the camp and entered. Unfortunately, he did not notice the sign at the entrance that read, Battalion Commander Only. Zhou Wei King was pleasantly surprised that the army washroom was very clean. He threw off his clothes and examined his new uniform. From that day onward, he was a soldier known as Zhou Xiao Pang. He had to gain high recognition within the army and return home to show off to his dad. His encounter with the battalion commander scared him to death and filled his bladder. So he answered nature's call before changing into his uniform. He recalled his earlier encounter with Binger. She was gorgeous and had a good character. Zhou Wei King wished his fiancée was someone like her. Unbeknownst to him, a figure walked toward the washroom. While he was caught up in his thoughts, the door swung open. He quickly shouted that the washroom was occupied, but it was too late. Shang Guan Binger stood in the doorway with a shocked expression. Zhou Wei King was horrified and thought he was surely done for this time. Binger saw his exposed back. Zhou Wei King was immediately flustered and loudly asked why she didn't knock. Binger covered her eyes in embarrassment. She did not need to knock because the washroom was for her private use. Naturally, Zhou Wei King was ignorant of that fact. He asked Binger to shut the door first. He later apologized and explained that he was changing into his uniform when he urgently had to answer nature's call. Binger was speechless. She could only bury her anger and frustration deep in her heart. She asked him to wait outside and slam the door, promising to settle things with him later. Zhou Wei King had a bad feeling because of her choice of words. Surely only a fool would stick around. He left, hoping her anger would disappear by the following day. He went to Sky Bo City's post office and sent a letter to his father. In it, he explained that he was well and was undergoing vigorous training. He also requested his father's assistance in breaking off his engagement with Princess Di Fu Ya. Afterward, he went to purchase some protective gear from a blacksmith. While Zhou Wei King was finalizing his conscription, the figure of a tall, middle-aged man spoke harshly to the person kneeling before him. He said he would be lenient if Wei King were safe. However, if he weren't, the figure kneeling before him would be buried with Wei King. The tall figure belonged to Sky Bo's emperor, Di Feng Ling. He wore a stern, unforgiving expression as he pointed at his kneeling daughter, Princess Di Fu Ya. The princess pleaded with him as she knelt on the floor. She had reflected on her mistake. However, wasn't she his only daughter? Tears filled her eyes as she looked at her father. The emperor explained that in the past, Zhou Wei King's father saved his life in a war. The princess would not be alive if it weren't for that man. The emperor owed his life to him. Because of him, the Heavenly Bow Empire survived in those vast lands for the past twenty years. It was all thanks to that man's blood, sweat, and tears in his valiant victories. The princess was not trying to develop the empire as a royal family member. Instead, she spent her days daydreaming about a hero, Prince Charming, riding into her life. Zhou Wei King was the marshal's only descendant and the emperor's godson. How was he inferior to the princess? She attacked him with her elemental jewel. The emperor spoke with a raised voice and a harsh tone. He swore she would follow Zhou Wei King to the grave if the boy died. 
Otherwise, the emperor would not be able to face his dear friend. Two men appeared and interrupted the emperor. He asked whether Zhou Wei King was all right. He had sent his servants to the forest to look for his godson. They reported that they could only find a set of footprints leaving the area, and they belonged to Viscount Zhou. Therefore, he must have left the area safely. The emperor was surprised because Zhou Wei King was just an ordinary human. He couldn't withstand a blow from a fire elemental jewel. The servant speculated that the boy's father must have given him a life-saving artifact. The report finally convinced the emperor. His expression was relieved as he said Zhou Wei King was always a lucky guy. He then turned and snorted at the princess, ordering her to stand. She would accompany him to the marshal's house to apologize to her fiancé. Zhou Wei King tried on his new helmet and vest at a blacksmith's shop in the city. They were made from titanium alloy, making them light and sturdy. Enemy arrows would not hurt him as long as he squatted down in battle. He could also use the helmet as a shield. He had spent so much money on the purchase. He remembered his treasure hidden within Skybow Forest and decided to retrieve it. He stuck his hand in the hollow of a tree and retrieved a small package. He was grateful that he wrapped it in an oilcloth. Otherwise, it would have been damaged. He found the treasure when he visited the forest when he was much younger. Back then, a skeleton had been clinging to it. The treasure was an old book with an imposing title, Immortal Deity Technique. Zhou Wei King was once afraid of getting injured. He tried practicing the mysterious cultivation technique recorded in the book, but gave up after a while. However, after the princess fatally wounded him, he could no longer accept his incompetence. If he still could not activate his heavenly jewel before he was 16 years old, he would forever regret it. So, he chose to take a gamble. Zhou Wei King attended his recruitment training the following day. He arrived having changed into his new uniform. An adjutant called to him and offered to lead him to his new accommodations within the barracks. He was led to a small personal tent. He was surprised by the good treatment of soldiers in the battalion. However, the adjutant informed him that he alone had a personal tent. He wished Zhou Wei King luck and asked him to work hard to stay alive. Zhou Wei King grew nervous when he heard those words. He asked what the adjutant meant because he was getting scared. The adjutant replied that Zhou Wei King ought to take responsibility for his actions. Zhou Wei King wondered whether the battalion commander Binger wanted revenge for what he did. Just as he revealed the other things that happened between himself and Binger, he heard a loud voice calling him. Binger approached him and demanded an explanation for the embarrassing details that Zhou Wei King had shared with the adjutant. She was determined to teach the boy a lesson. She asked Zhou Wei King to stand at attention and announced his punishment. For slandering his superiors, he would receive ten whips. Zhou Wei King found it ridiculous. He had to be whipped when he had just joined. Binger ordered him to turn around. He complied while tearfully asking her to be lenient because of his weak physique. Zhou Wei King reluctantly let her vent her anger with a lash or two. Binger snorted at his plea. Zhou Wei King sheepishly told the commander he was ready. Binger lashed his rear end in frustration. In her eyes, the boy played too much. Zhou Wei King rolled on the ground and howled in pain. Of course, he was exaggerating. Binger felt something was off. She had not used heavenly energy. How was the boy in so much pain? She wondered whether his physique was genuinely weak. In reality, Zhou Wei King had learned to reduce his punishments after getting beaten by his dad when he was much younger. He would cry his lungs out as if the pain was unbearable, even when it wasn't. Binger wanted to relieve her frustrations by beating him up, but she chose to give up since he couldn't handle a beating. She asked whether he had learned from his mistake. Zhou Wei King sneakily glanced at her as she said the nine remaining lashes would be administered later. His acting managed to convince her of his remorse. Binger snorted and said he did not qualify as a soldier with such a weak physique. She decided to personally train him on a set of strengthening exercises before his formal recruit training. Zhou Wei King took a closer look at the commander and admired her beauty. She was even pretty when she was angry. Binger promised to dismiss him from the 3rd Battalion if he did not meet her expectations. He saluted her in agreement and watched as she left. He saw that the commander had a kind heart. He would refrain from angering her in the future. Zhou Wei King queued for lunch and tearfully admired his plate. The portions he received were so much more than what he had at home. Although Zhou Wei King's father was one of the highest-ranking officials in the empire, he lived a life of simplicity. The meals in his house were only served with two vegetables and soup. Zhou Wei King cheerfully rested his hand on his full belly. He was grateful for his decision to join the army. He found the commander already waiting for him.
If he only had such a beauty waiting for him every day, it would be the greatest pleasure in his entire life. He sighed in his heart. Such things were only possible in his imagination. How could a top genius like Binger fall in love with trash like himself? He greeted her, but she coldly snorted and said he took his time to eat. Joe Wei King awkwardly explained how much he enjoyed the food. Binger asked him whether his reaction to the whip had all been an act. She had not used heavenly energy after all. Joe Wei King fervently denied it. Judging by his expression, Binger could tell he had been faking it. Binger handed him a marching sandbag. It instantly fell to the ground because he could not bear its weight. The sandbag weighed 20 kilograms. Joe Wei King looked astonished as he asked the commander what the sandbag was for. Binger asked why he even had to ask. Of course, it was for his special training. Joe Wei King was shocked. The sandbag was a little too harsh, even though it was just special training. The commander replied that as an archer, his speed and strength were far below standard. Joe Wei King objected by asking why it wasn't enough to be an accurate shot. Binger was curious. She asked whether he could shoot accurately, to which he replied affirmatively. The commander challenged him to an archery contest. He would not have to undergo special training if his shots were more accurate than hers. Binger and Zhou Wei King went to a nearby forest and found a tree in the middle of a clearing. It was 200 meters away, and its target would be the center of its trunk. Zhou Wei King was confident in his ability as an archer. He prepared an arrow and aimed. He focused his sight and released the arrow. As expected, it flew accurately and found its target. The commander was impressed. She did not expect Zhou Wei King's archery to be at a captain's level. Zhou Wei King proudly asked the commander for her opinion. However, Binger would not let him be smug. She said she could shoot and bow more accurately with her feet. Zhou Wei King called her bluff. There was no way she could do it. He promised to listen to her every instruction if she could accomplish such a feat. Binger snorted. She was the commander. Zhou Wei King had to listen to her orders regardless of the situation. She silently performed a handstand and drew the bow with her feet. Zhou Wei King was shocked. This commander was serious. She had a focused gaze as she stabilized her body. The arrow was released and flew swiftly to its target. Binger stood and asked Zhou Wei King whether he was convinced, but the boy was only flustered and had a bloody nose. He advised the commander never to attempt such a trick shot while wearing a dress. Otherwise, she would reveal everything. Binger was instantly embarrassed and tried to straighten her dress. She accused him of having filthy thoughts. Zhou Wei King tried his best to assure that he saw nothing. The commander was irritated and ordered him to run laps around the camp while carrying the sandbags. He was not allowed to stop until she said so. Zhou Wei King reluctantly complied and went on his way. Binger ran beside him while sweat poured down his face. He begged the commander for a break because they had been running for an hour. Zhou Wei King looked closer at the commander and saw bright red jewels above her right arm. He wondered whether they were heavenly jewels. They seemed to be bigger than those of the princess. When the commander ordered him to run faster, he took the opportunity to inquire about the nature of the jewels he saw. The commander promised to tell him if he ran faster. After some begging, Zhou Wei King got an answer. Binger explained that elemental jewel masters were different from physical jewel masters. As she spoke, a pair of jewels appeared above her left arm. She explained they were her physical jewels and asked whether he could tell the difference. Zhou Wei King took another glance at the jewels and asked whether they were the pure-colored dragonstone jade variant. The commander replied affirmatively. She explained that the biggest difference between the physical jewels of heavenly jewel masters and those of physical jewel masters was the color. For example, her physical jewels boosted her agility. However, physical jewel masters would have their various physical attributes boosted entirely by 1.5 times. Zhou Wei King was surprised and listened more intently. Binger explained that her elemental jewels were the rarest red tourmaline with the wind attribute. They were also known as Emperor Tourmaline and could boost one's elemental abilities by 1.5 times more than normal tourmaline jewels. The jewels of Heavenly Jewel Masters were usually of a higher grade. Zhou Wei King was fascinated by the new information. He asked whether a lower Heavenly Jewel Master was stronger than a middle elemental or physical Jewel Master. Binger replied affirmatively. However, she explained that it was only in terms of sheer power. Heavenly Jewel Masters found it more challenging to cultivate. There were plenty of upper physical and elemental jewel grandmasters, but she had never heard of any heavenly jewel master who cultivated to the peak. Binger mentioned a legend that said the strongest heavenly jewel master did not just have nine jewels of each type, but twelve. They cultivated to that level, went against the laws of nature, and gained the ability to change the world. Zhou Wei King was shocked. 
His father was a middle heavenly jewel grandmaster with eight jewels in each hand. Zhou Wei King thought his dad only knew battle tactics. At that moment, he realized what people meant when they said, the apple fell far from the tree. Zhou Wei King asked about his father's strength, and Binger spoke about the strength and status of the marshal. The man was also her idol. Marshal Zhou was among the strongest in the boundless mainland, and his elemental jewel attributes were among the four high-level attributes. According to Binger, the emperor once said that even if all the elemental and physical jewel masters combined their powers, they would not be a match for the marshal. Zhou Wei King teased Binger for being a fangirl. He asked why she shouldn't be the marshal's daughter-in-law since she was so pretty. Commander Binger blushed. She then loudly asked him to stop spouting nonsense because she was not worthy of the marshal's son. Zhou Wei King winced in pain as he was left bruised on the ground from her outburst. Binger threatened to break his legs if he brought up the subject again. With a flustered expression, she added that Viscount Zhou, the marshal's son, was engaged to the princess. Binger kicked Zhou Wei King when he was still down and asked him to stop faking death. He still had to continue running. She wondered whether he had passed out when he remained unresponsive. The commander supported him by the shoulder and helped him return to the barracks. Two men sat together at the marshal's residence. They were Marshal Zhou and Emperor Difeng Ling. The marshal had given the emperor a letter he had received earlier that day. The emperor acknowledged that the handwriting belonged to Zhou Wei King. He addressed the marshal as his elder brother and asked whether the letter had been forged to console him. He was determined to bury the princess with Zhou Wei King if the worst happened. Marshal Zhou assured the emperor that the letter was genuine. He said that Zhou Wei King had probably realized how much trouble he was in and dared not return home to face him. The emperor admitted his daughter's guilt and asked the marshal to be lenient with Zhou Wei King when he returned home. Marshal Zhou snorted and said Zhou Wei King was aware of his limits. He suggested to the emperor that they do as Zhou Wei King asked and call off the engagement. The emperor was not pleased by the suggestion and protested, much to the marshal's dismay. He was unwilling to discuss the matter. It was soon nightfall at the barracks, and Zhou Wei King lay on his bed. His eyes suddenly flew open. He sat up, wondering whether he had fainted. He winced when he felt the sharp pain in his muscles. He felt that the commander had been ruthless with him. A pleasant aroma filled his nose. Generous food portions had been brought into his tent. Naturally, he did not stand on ceremony and immediately began devouring the meal. He found a note beside his food and read it. The note said, Continue training tomorrow. Zhou Wei King tearfully protested the inhumane treatment. After his meal, he quietly settled down. He had waited until everyone was asleep. He intended to begin his cultivation. He unwrapped the old copy of the Immortal Deity Technique and opened it. The disclaimer on the book read, Those without strong willpower must not practice. He was shocked the first time he read it and grew too scared to try cultivating. Things were different this time. He would be considered trash forever if he did not awaken before his 16th birthday. Zhou Wei King recalled how the whole empire despised him, including the princess. He could not keep living like that. He realized how awesome heavenly jewel masters were after listening to Binger. His dad, the marshal, was also a great heavenly jewel master. Zhou Wei King was confident that as long as he awakened, he too would become one. No matter what, he had to try. According to the book, he could awaken once he broke through 36 acupuncture points. By doing so, he would receive his power jewels. He had a determined expression once he had made up his mind. Those who looked down on him would see him in a new light. Zhou Wei King sat cross-legged and focused intently on the instructions written in the book. The clavicle point at the upper part of the shoulder was the easiest point to break through out of all 36 points. According to the book, he needed to focus his consciousness on that acupuncture point. He followed the instructions and pressed his left acupuncture point to numb the left side for a while. He felt nothing and decided it was best to start cultivating. He shut his eyes and focused. There were two clavicle acupuncture points, the left and the right. He needed to focus his energy on the two points to break through them. Zhou Wei King meditated for an hour but grew frustrated because he could not feel a trace of internal heavenly energy. Just as he was about to give up, he felt a small amount of energy in his abdomen. The amount was small but powerful. The next step was to focus and guide the heavenly energy upward. He noticed that the energy was nothing like what was described in the book. It was supposed to be tiny, but it grew exponentially. The swirling heavenly energy now rested around his chest. Zhou Wei King began with his right clavicle acupuncture point. He carefully guided the energy to the point. 
Suddenly his body shuddered, and a wave of pain washed over his right shoulder. His right shoulder went numb akin to the sensation of being struck by lightning. The numbness spread to his entire body. Soon, he could not feel his body. Blood spurted out of his mouth as he coughed. With great effort, he calmed himself and wondered whether he had succeeded. His vision became blurred, and he felt his consciousness fading away. Suddenly, a wave of power erupted from his body. It came from the black jewel and felt cold. The swirling mass of dark energy invaded his right clavicle acupuncture point. Zhou Wei King could not tell what was happening to him. A black pattern spread over his entire body. His muscles bulged, and his body released a menacing aura. Zhou Wei King noticed a vague consciousness within the black jewel. It was a black tiger, and it let out a frightening roar. Shang Guan Binger was meditating in her tent when her eyes flew open in surprise. She felt a cold aura and wondered in excitement whether a heavenly jewel master was awakening in the barracks. She left her tent and was shocked to realize the aura came from Zhou Wei King's tent. She rushed toward the tent and noticed the thick, dark aura surrounding it. She grew more excited when she speculated that Zhou Wei King could be awakening a darkness elemental attribute, one of the strongest. She peeked through Zhou Wei King's tent and was met with a terrifying figure. Zhou Wei King's body was covered in black markings, making him look like a feral beast ready to tear into its prey. Zhou Wei King dashed toward Binger at a frightening speed. He closed the distance before she could react and pinned her to the ground. Binger shouted at Zhou Wei King to no avail. Her eyes teared when she realized what was happening. The look in his eyes, the aura he released, he was awakening, and she would become his sacrificial offering. At that moment, she vividly remembered the legends about a special awakening for heavenly jewel masters. Upon awakening, they would emit a strong, dense, evil aura and require a sacrificial offering. Only then would their evil aura subside. There was only one fate that awaited those offered as a sacrifice, death. The heavenly jewel masters would be unable to control the awakening process. Shang Guan Binger never thought she would be so unlucky. Zhou Wei King held on to her with his overwhelming strength. Binger tearfully asked him to regain his wits. However, Zhou Wei King had been possessed by an evil entity which then laughed coldly at the commander's words. Binger helplessly shut her eyes when Zhou Wei King grabbed her collar and savagely tore off the top of her dress. Her body was exposed. Zhou Wei King towered over her with a hollow look in his eyes as a dark, evil aura surrounded him. The commander's pleas fell on deaf ears. Zhou Wei King's hands reached for her neck and tightened their grip. His eyes bore lethal intent. Binger had lost the strength to resist as she choked. Suddenly, Zhou Wei King's eyes cleared and he roared in defiance. He used his great willpower to push back the evil consciousness and regain control over his body. He gazed at Binger on the floor with a horrified expression. He was in a state of confusion, and a crippling pain pierced his head. Zhou Wei King regained consciousness at the most crucial moment. The black jewel broke through his blocked meridians, and all the impurities within his body were expelled. His body had undergone a complete rebirth. His heavenly jewels emerged for the first time. At the end of his awakening, the black aura and black markings on his body also dissipated. Finally, he passed out from exhaustion. Zhou Wei King clutched his head as the black tiger roared. It had been such a frightening nightmare that he woke up with a start. He examined his body with surprise. He was alive. The immortal deity technique was too scary. He instantly got a nosebleed when he saw the exposed commander on the floor. He grew flustered as he wondered why Binger was lying beside him. He covered his eyes and thought he had perhaps died from cultivating too hard. Binger groaned as she regained consciousness. She sat up and crossed her arms in an attempt to cover up. She thought Zhou Wei King had tried to do something to her yet again. Zhou Wei King explained that he had just regained his senses and did not know why she was in his tent. The memories of the assault flooded the commander's mind, and tears welled up in her eyes again. She grabbed an arrow from a quiver lying on the floor and angrily said she would end him. Zhou Wei King saw the arrow quickly rushing toward his face. His body unconsciously dodged and retreated a few steps back. He was stunned. He did not know how he had suddenly become so fast. He also noticed he had a jewel on top of each hand. To his surprise, they were heavenly jewels, and he was thrilled at the discovery. Binger still had teary eyes when she realized that Zhou Wei King had awakened as a heavenly jewel master. She was curious about the kind of power he possessed. Zhou Wei King quietly reflected on the events of that evening. All he could remember was the agony he experienced before collapsing. He also felt a conscience within the black jewel, and his mind was overcome by bloodlust. He quickly connected the dots when he saw the beautiful commander trembling before him. He had lost control and attacked her, 
He saw the bruises on her neck, quickly apologized, and explained that he did not intentionally attack her. He knelt to show his sincerity and pledged to take responsibility and care for her forever. He hated himself for what he had done to her and did not know what else to say. Binger sobbed as she clutched the arrow in her hand. Zhou Wei King saw the pain in her eyes. He shut his eyes and offered his life. The arrow in the commander's hand fell to the floor. She sobbed bitterly when she realized she could not end his life. Zhou Wei King could only voice his apology once more. Binger wiped off her tears as she wondered why she had become a sacrifice. The young man that knelt before her even saw her exposed body. However, he had awakened as a heavenly jewel master. He was an important existence for the Heavenly Bow Empire. She could not simply end him. Doing so would be selfish. Binger contemplated the events that transpired and realized that Zhou Wei King could not be blamed. If the Empire could gain one more Heavenly Jewel Master, her sacrifice would be worth it. Once her emotions had settled, Binger warned Zhou Wei King against telling anyone about what had transpired between them. She had a serious expression and promised to end him if he did. Zhou Wei King did not hesitate and swore to keep silent. After a momentary pause, he offered to take responsibility once more. He promised to treat her well. In response, she kicked him out of his tent and covered her body with a robe. When he returned, she asked to see the kind of jewel he had awakened. He displayed his elemental jewel and asked what kind it was because he had never seen one like it. Binger was shocked when she examined it. It was the Alexandrite cat's eye. She explained it was a jewel that only heavenly jewel masters could possess. Besides having a higher quality, it also possessed a high-tier elemental attribute. Moreover, it possibly contained multiple elements. When a heavenly jewel master possessed two or more elemental attributes, their corresponding jewel would likely be an alexandrite. Zhou Wei King grew excited. He likely possessed more than two elemental attributes. That meant he was no longer trash. Binger explained that the alexandrite cat's eye rarely appeared among heavenly jewel masters. However, the owner would likely possess more than four elemental attributes when it appeared. Binger was amazed that Zhou Wei King had awakened such a legendary heavenly jewel. She asked him to explain how he awakened his heavenly jewels in one night, because she did not sense any heavenly energy from him. She examined the copy of the immortal deity technique. However, it did not have the answers she sought. Zhou Wei King was surprised that his mysterious cultivation manual had been found. When Binger pressed for an explanation, he described his encounter with the black jewel in his body. He explained that it was likely that his awakening was related to it. He also explained his actions, from army recruitment to his attempt at cultivation and breaking through the first acupuncture point. Binger was embarrassed by his narration, which ended with him finding her beside him. He also explained seeing a winged black tiger within the black jewel. Binger found his story hard to believe. It was all too incredible. She asked him not to leave his tent without her permission. Zhou Wei King wondered why, so she explained that he did not know how to hide his heavenly jewels. If other empires discovered him, they would send countless assassins to eliminate him. Zhou Wei King complied with her request. He was relieved that she still cared for him despite what had happened. As he watched her leave his tent, he resolved to always be there for her even if she did not accept him. He also decided to keep the commander's torn clothes as a memento. He sat cross-legged and noticed that the remaining acupuncture points had been opened. Zhou Wei King had slept through an entire day when he heard the commander's loud voice calling him. She reprimanded him for being lazy. Binger had come to guide his cultivation. However, at that moment, she wondered whether it was worth it. After some light banter, she asked for his origin in all seriousness. She explained that although he had great talent, she could not teach him how to cultivate heavenly jewels if she did not know his background. Zhou Wei King replied that he could not divulge his background, but assured that he was a citizen of the Heavenly Bow Empire. He explained that he ran from home because of his strict father and joined the army to forge his path. His serious tone convinced Binger to overlook his identity. Zhou Wei King added that he was from a wealthy family and could easily support her, but she quickly shut him down. Binger made him swear on three conditions before she would teach him how to cultivate. The first was to stay loyal to the empire, no matter how strong he became, the second was always to be part of the empire and never betray it, and the third was to never reveal to anyone his status as a heavenly jewel master without her permission. She reminded him of the danger of being discovered by foreign empires. Zhou Wei King swore to uphold all three conditions. Binger added another condition. Zhou Wei King could not force her to accept him no matter how strong he became. He swore to her despite feeling a little offended. Binger accepted his oath. Although it hurt Zhou Wei King's pride, he used her as a sacrifice, and she did not want to take any chances. 
Zhou Wei King promised to listen to every single instruction. If Binger told him to steal a chicken, he would not touch a dog. Binger asked him to focus because she would start instructing him. She began with the basics and explained that once a cultivation method was selected, it must not be changed. Since Zhou Wei King had already started using the Immortal Deity technique, he had to continue with the same. She described the Immortal Deity technique as a powerful technique. However, it was only dangerous to the practitioners in its initial stage. After listening to her lecture about Heavenly Jewel Masters, Zhou Wei King's interest was ignited. He listened to her more intently. Binger noticed the change when the boy focused. She thought that since he had the legendary Heavenly Jewels, and with his status as a Heavenly Jewel Master, perhaps he had a chance with her. She immediately blushed and sighed at the thought. His morals were a big problem, so she could not relax around him. Binger left after concluding her lesson and asked Zhou Wei King to continue cultivating and keep her informed about his progress with the Immortal Deity Technique. She would be staying nearby to protect him. Zhou Wei King was happy to have such a beauty protecting him. After learning, he decided to put everything to practice with training. Zhou Wei King poured heavenly energy into his physical jewel. It shone with a silvery white brilliance. Suddenly his muscles bulged and his body brimmed with incredible power. His muscles, bones, and meridians were filled with strong, heavenly energy. Zhou Wei King felt he could lift a bull if it stood before him. The power of the physical jewel was amazing. The physical jewel gradually absorbed the heavenly energy within his body to enhance his strength. He tried the elemental jewel next. When he channeled heavenly energy into it, there was a bright flash and a dial appeared. It was divided into six sections and had a pointer. Wherever Zhou Wei King turned, the dial remained in his vision. He wondered whether it was in his eyes. He quickly deduced that the partitions on the dial represented six different attributes in his elemental jewel. He selected the cayenne attribute. A cayenne aura surrounded his body instantly. He felt his body getting lighter and realized it was the wind attribute. An idea flashed in his mind. He was curious about how high he could jump with the enhancement of the wing attribute. He ended up launching himself through the roof of his tent. He ignored the distinct bump on his head and continued with his experiment. The blue attribute was selected, and dark electric bolts appeared on his hand. It was the lightning attribute. The silver attribute was selected. However, upon activation, Zhou Wei King did not notice any changes, apart from the increased consumption of heavenly energy within his body. The black attribute was activated, and dark energy appeared around his body. The darkness attribute had a similar energy consumption rate to the unknown silver attribute. Zhou Wei King concluded that both attributes belonged to a higher tier. Besides the darkness, the other three high-tier attributes were light, life, and spatial attribute. The silver attribute could not be light, and neither did it feel like the life attribute. He speculated that the silver attribute could be the spatial attribute. Zhou Wei King was thrilled about having two of the four great attributes. He turned his attention to the next attribute. It was colored gray. Upon activation, a dense, evil aura surrounded Zhou Wei King, making him shudder. He hurriedly switched out of it and spun the dial rapidly. He was shocked to find that all his heavenly energy had been consumed. He felt dizzy and passed out from the heavy drain. He woke up later with a weariness toward the gray attribute. Judging from the consumption, it was a powerful attribute. Zhou Wei King concluded that he could only use five attributes out of the six he could access, and the gray attribute must have been the evil attribute. He noticed his heavenly energy was recovering quickly. The immortal deity technique was already proving to be miraculous. A familiar voice woke him up. It belonged to Captain Mao Li. Zhou Wei King was ordered to dress and follow him to see the battalion commander. He was happy to see Binger when he arrived at her tent. However, his expression turned into a glare when he saw a pretty boy standing behind her. Binger informed Zhou Wei King that she had assigned him as her aide. Zhou Wei King blushed when he realized that he would always be beside Binger. He accepted his new position without hesitation. The pretty boy beside the commander objected, making Zhou Wei King grit his teeth in anger. He wondered how the man before him dared to violate the commander's order. Binger addressed him as Captain Xiao and asked where something was wrong with her decision. Captain Xiao replied that the commander's work was important and the recruit was incompetent. Binger said she did not need the protection of her aide and challenged him to make a recommendation. Captain Xiao clarified that he was not challenging the commander's decision, but did not believe her aide could follow her into battle. He doubted whether Zhou Wei King was able to shoot an arrow. Captain Xiao then boldly volunteered to resign from his post and become the commander's new aide. He pledged to give his life to protect her.
Zhou Wei King could not help frowning at the captain's shamelessness. Binger politely turned him down, saying he was the 3rd Battalion's pillar of strength. She could not let him hold the post of a mere aide. Binger explained that she had tested Zhou Wei King personally, and he showed great potential. He was competent enough to be her aide. Zhou Wei King could not help but smirk when he heard her words. Captain Xiao stubbornly requested a demonstration of Zhou Wei King's archery. The commander complied and asked how the captain planned to test him. Binger knew Captain Xiao would not stop until he rigorously tested the boy. The captain held a purple dawn bow and asked whether Zhou Wei King could draw it. Zhou Wei King was familiar with the expensive bow. Captain Xiao said Zhou Wei King would have shown his qualification to be the commander's aide if he could draw the bow. Zhou Wei King held the bow and had a look of surprise. The captain challenged him to use all his strength. Zhou Wei King complied. His expression had changed to a confident one. His father made him practice with a purple darn bow at home for two years, not to mention that he now possessed heavenly jewels. He channeled heavenly energy into his physical jewel and drew the bow. Captain Xiao was shocked, while Binger had a slight smile. Zhou Wei King used the opportunity to teach the captain a lesson. He pulled the bowstring harder and snapped the purple dawn bow in half. He then feigned surprise, saying the bow had broken, yet he had not even used his full strength. Captain Xiao was dumbstruck. Binger asked whether the commander had any further objections. Zhou Wei King smirked and addressed the captain, saying he could be ignored, but ignoring the commander shows poor judgment. Zhou Wei King's mockery angered Captain Xiao. However, the captain turned and left the commander's tent. Zhou Wei King followed Binger to the Star Forest. No one was around, so Zhou Wei King asked whether she had brought him there to make him disappear. She asked whether he had linked with his heavenly jewels, considering what he had done to the strong bow. Zhou Wei King replied affirmatively. Binger was impressed. A task that had taken her five days, Zhou Wei King accomplished in one night. She asked about the attributes of his elemental jewel. Zhou Wei King mentioned only five attributes because he did not yet understand the sixth one. The commander was shocked. Zhou Wei King had five attributes with two from the higher tier. She never imagined such an elemental jewel would exist. The boy had incredible luck. Zhou Wei King laughed it off and said luck was a part of one's strength. Binger told him not to get cocky and said she brought him there to begin training as a heavenly jewel master. She explained that the attributes of heavenly jewels typically increased aspects of a jewel master. They are not used for offensive attacks. Zhou Wei King was confused. He remembered seeing jewel masters using their jewel's power to fight. The commander said his observations were correct. However, his jewels had not yet grown to that level. A brilliant glow shot out of her fingers and formed an arrow. She mentioned that there was physical jewel consolidating equipment and elemental jewel inscribing. As Binger knocked the energy arrow on her bow, Zhou Wei King asked whether the arrow was made using physical jewel consolidating equipment. In response, she drew the bow and asked him to watch closely. The arrow appeared like a bright blur as it flew swiftly into the distance upon release. Zhou Wei King was amazed when he noticed that the arrow made no sound. The arrow nimbly avoided the tree trunks in its path and drew an arc in the sky before striking the ground near his feet. Zhou Wei King was impressed. Binger said the arrow was her first jewel manifestation, Silent Vector Arrow. She explained that heavenly energy could be manifested into forms of weapons and armor through a special method. She could manifest the arrows indefinitely as long as there was enough heavenly energy. Zhou Wei King eagerly asked how one could manifest a shape. Binger explained that one would need a consolidating equipment scroll to do it. However, they were very expensive. So many heavenly jewel masters could not afford to buy them. Additionally, the success rate of learning from one was very low. Money was not a problem for Zhou Wei King because his father worked with the emperor. Binger interrupted his thoughts by asking what equipment he would manifest if he had the ability. It was a full suit of armor, Zhou Wei King answered matter-of-factly. Binger was annoyed and asked why he couldn't think of something more interesting. Zhou Wei King attempted to explain, but the commander cut him off and continued with the subject. She continued her explanation. Elemental Jewel Manifestation granted elemental skills. She then demonstrated her first elemental jewel skill, wind blades, and her target was a nearby tree. The terrifying impact of the wind blades shattered the tree and only left a stump. Binger explained that a stored skill for an elemental jewel was troublesome to obtain because it required skills from heavenly beasts. Therefore, the inscription palace was where most people went to carry out elemental jewel inscribing. She advised him to choose only the skills compatible with his attributes. 
Binger concluded the training session and asked Zhou Wei King to prepare to leave the barracks with her on the following day. Zhou Wei King asked whether they would go out together and what they would do. The commander frowned and asked him to choose his words carefully. Zhou Wei King and Binger met early the following day. He asked where they were going, but she gave a cryptic answer. She started running and asked him to use his wind attribute to keep up with her. They had a long way to go and limited time. Zhou Wei King tried his best to keep up with Binger as they ran swiftly. She noticed the improvement in his speed. It took him some time, but he eventually matched her speed. After half a day of running, Binger stopped for a rest. Zhou Wei King's stomach rumbled when he saw the commander eating. He quickly asked for a bite, but she declined and chided him for not bringing his dried rations. Zhou Wei King ventured into the forest and caught a rabbit for lunch. The little rabbit looked beaten up and worn out. Binger said it was cute and stopped Zhou Wei King from eating it. She could not bear to see it becoming his lunch and used her authority as a commander to order him to release it. Fortunately, he had strong survival skills and soon returned with bamboo shoots. Binger wondered where Zhou Wei King had acquired such skills. She had no idea his father had often tossed him out into the wilderness since he was young. The goal was to have him hone and sharpen his survival skills. He finished preparing the bamboo shoot soup, and the aroma was pleasant. He asked the commander to try some of it. It was the first time Binger ever had such delicious bamboo shoot soup. Binger ate to her heart's content, and her attitude toward Zhou Wei King improved. She now considered taking a skilled chef with her for all future outings. His culinary skills impressed her, and she asked him to prepare all their subsequent meals. Zhou Wei King was all too happy to cook for the beautiful battalion commander. He ensured each meal was varied to please her. Seeing her happy made him happy. He took advantage of the pleasant atmosphere and asked about their destination. Binger said they were headed to Flying Cliff City, the capital of the Fei Li Empire. Zhou Wei King wondered why they traveled on foot, considering how far their destination was. He preferred taking a carriage. Binger explained that a carriage cost two gold coins per person. The cost was too high. She explained that Heavenly Jewel Masters had many expenses, so they had to save whenever possible. They were going to spend a lot at their destination, too. The Heavenly Bow Empire had neither a consolidating equipment scroll master nor a skill-storing palace. However, their destination had both. They were going to try their luck. Binger had recently obtained her second elemental jewel, and Zhou Wei King had neither consolidated equipment nor stored elemental skills. They traveled the road day and night and arrived at their destination on the twelfth day. Their first stop was the skill-storing palace, where Zhou Wei King would obtain membership and a complimentary robe. When they arrived, Binger reminded him not to reveal his elemental jewel during registration. She explained that the elemental jewel was a heavenly jewel master's secret and must not be revealed outside of a fight. If someone wanted proof that he was a heavenly jewel master, he only needed to reveal his physical jewel because it had a unique color. A female attendant asked about the nature of their visit. Binger replied that she was there for promotion, and Zhou Wei King had come to register. The attendant asked to see her physical jewels for verification. Binger complied, stating her name and offering her identification plaque. When it was Zhou Wei King's turn, he revealed his physical jewel and real age. Binger was shocked. However, he nervously added that he would be 14 in two months. The commander realized that the boy had lied to join the army. Zhou Wei King's registration was complete, and he received a plaque and a complimentary robe. Binger led him out of the skill-storing palace because it was too expensive. They prioritized looking for a place to rest and wash up, and after that, looking for a good consolidation equipment master. Zhou Wei King was excited and considered asking his godfather to buy him some skills. Later, he changed into the robes from the skill-storing palace and followed Binger to a consolidation equipment master she knew. She warned him about the master's bad temper, so he had to behave best. They soon arrived at a wooden cottage in a forest. Binger knocked and called for Senior Huyan. A tall, middle-aged man opened the door. He complimented Binger for her quick promotion. The commander asked whether the master was around. She had addressed him as Senior Wind, but his name was Feng Yu. Feng Yu reminded her about the master's stingy personality. He asked whether she had brought enough money. Zhou Wei King wondered whether Senior Huyan was even more stingy than Binger, and sniggered at the thought that the senior could be her teacher. The commander noticed his reaction and asked him to greet Feng Yu. Zhou Wei King complied and introduced himself. They were soon invited into the cottage to meet the master. After some time, Zhou Wei King noticed a meatball walking in from a side room. 
When he focused his eyes, he realized it was an older man who seemed to be around 60 years old. Binger was first to greet him. However, Senior Hu Yan dismissed the pleasantries and waved his sleeves. Three pieces of paper appeared. The paper displaying a shield was the first to catch Zhou Wei King's eye. Its name was Zhuan Wu Shield and was limited to strength, endurance, or toughness attribute heavenly jewel masters to use, able to mount elemental jewel. Binger noticed his interest in the shield and wondered how much the boy feared death. She did not know that Zhou Wei King coveted life and feared death. The shield was undoubtedly of enormous attraction to him. Binger asked the price of the Overlord Bow's consolidation scroll among the options presented. Senior Hu Yan sternly reminded her about his rules. He remembered that her physical jewel was of the agility type. Thus, she could not take that specific scroll. Binger explained that she was buying for Zhou Wei King because his physical jewel was the pure strength type. Senior Hu Yan plainly said the Overlord Bow would cost 200,000 gold coins. The price was too expensive, even for Zhou Wei King, who had a wealthy background. He then ventured to ask the price of the Xuan Wu shield. Senior Hu Yan looked annoyed and replied, 120,000 gold coins. Binger interrupted and forbade him from choosing the shield. She insisted that the Overlord Bao was a better match for him. Zhou Wei King argued that the wind-wielding boots suited Binger, and he was not anxious to get consolidation equipment. Binger replied that she already had her first equipment, enough to protect herself, but Zhou Wei King had none. She then turned towards Senior Hu Yan and asked to reserve the Overlord Bao until she could return with enough money. Senior Hu Yan dismissed her and asked Feng Yu to send them away. He then turned away and said they should leave if they did not have the money. Binger asked him to make an exception for them and bend the rules. She even offered to leave her Purple Dawn bow as a deposit. Senior Hu Yan dismissed her again and asked her to leave. Zhou Wei King could not help it and blocked Senior Hu Yan's way. He pleaded for him to show them some consideration. However, his attempt only angered the master, making him raise the price to 300,000 gold coins. Zhou Wei King persisted and asked to be given a chance. However, Senior Hu Yan sneered and raised the price to 400,000 gold coins. Zhou Wei King glared at the master and wanted to curse him. Binger interrupted him before he could say anything else. She apologized to Senior Hu Yan and accepted the Overlord Bow at the original price of 200,000. She offered a piece of spirit jade worth 50,000 gold coins as a deposit while she left to fetch the balance. Senior Hu Yan was interested and said he would have agreed to her suggestion if she had offered the spirit jade earlier. Its value was higher than 50,000 gold coins, perhaps even 100,000. Senior Hu Yan stubbornly said he raised the price because the boy had blocked his path. He wasn't someone who went back on his word. Therefore, if they did not have 400,000 gold coins, they should leave and find other consolidating equipment masters. Zhou Wei King gritted his teeth in anger and wanted to find other masters. However, Binger explained that Senior Hu Yan was the only consolidating equipment grandmaster in the city. No other master could compare to his work. Senior Hu Yan was offended by the boy's words and raised the price to 500,000 gold coins. He promised that if Zhou Wei King insulted him again, he would be banned from Senior Hu Yan's shop. Zhou Wei King clenched his fist and said he had never wanted to punch anyone more. Senior Hu Yan scoffed and said many wanted to punch and even kill him. However, he was still living well. Zhou Wei King would have to get past Feng Yu first. Feng Yu was an upper-level physical jewel master with nine jewels, each with consolidating equipment. Feng Yu asked Zhou Wei King to let things go because the master had become unreasonable. Zhou Wei King was enraged and released a frightening aura from his body. His heavenly jewels were revealed, much to the commander's shock. Senior Hu Yan was shocked to see the boy's elemental jewel, the Alexandrite Cat's Eye Jewel. Binger hurriedly said the consolidation equipment was too expensive and apologized for Zhou Wei King's attitude. She wanted to leave as soon as possible because the boy had revealed a legendary elemental jewel. Senior Hu Yan asked her to wait. His arrogant expression had vanished. Instead, he used a more ingratiating tone as he asked why Zhou Wei King had not mentioned earlier that he possessed a greater attribute jewel. He added that he would offer a discount because of it. Binger explained that they would still be unable to afford the Overlord bow, even with discounts. Senior Hu Yan explained that he understood her concern that the boy's rare spatial attribute elemental jewel had been exposed. He assured her of his upright character despite his love of money. He promised not to do anything to harm Zhou Wei King. Binger asked what he meant. Senior Hu Yan explained that consolidating equipment masters were required to possess the spatial attribute. The latter was the rarest among the four greater attributes. 
light, life, darkness, and space. Spatial jewel masters were incomparably rare. Therefore, it was difficult to find one who chose to become a consolidating jewel master. Senior Huyan revealed that he, too, possessed the spatial attribute, and the scrolls he made had a 1% success rate. That was the limit of his skill. Only heavenly jewel masters who become consolidation equipment masters had the potential to achieve a greater level, even ascend to the god realm. That was Senior Huyan's greatest dream, one that he could no longer achieve. However, he had enough theory and knowledge to pass on to his future disciple. Zhou Weiqing expressed disbelief as he asked whether Senior Huyan was trying to recruit him as a disciple. Senior Huyan cleared his throat and said the scroll's price would be open for discussion if Zhou Weiqing became his disciple. He would only take the 150,000 gold coins they currently had. Binger beamed with excitement. However, Zhou Weiqing protested. Senior Huyan was perplexed. He reduced the price to 100,000 gold coins to appease the boy. Zhou Weiqing finally had his chance for revenge. He said he had never heard of a master who did not give his disciple a gift upon meeting, but asked for money instead. Feng Yu chuckled. He had never seen the old master admit defeat. Senior Huyan finally gave in and promised to give the overlord Bao scroll for free as long as Zhou Wei King became his disciple. Zhou Wei King pressed his advantage and asked for a greater compromise from Senior Huyan. He explained that the life of a heavenly jewel master was expensive and that he and Binger had already joined the skill storing palace. He thanked the senior for the generous offer but still declined it. Senior Huyan was shocked and warned that joining the skill storing palace was akin to selling themselves to the Fei Li Empire. Zhou Wei King argued that he had no choice. If they worked for the skill storing palace, they would eventually obtain the scrolls they needed, although they were expensive. Binger realized Zhou Wei King's cunning nature and allowed him to proceed. Zhou Wei King finally bade the old master farewell and said they would leave for the skill storing palace. Perhaps they would have the opportunity to buy scrolls from him in the future. Senior Huyan was unwilling to watch the opportunity slip away and offered to give the overlord Bao and the wind-wielding boots for free. He held two stacks of scrolls in wooden boxes and asked Zhou Wei King and Binger to consolidate their new equipment in the side rooms. Zhou Wei King smiled with satisfaction while Binger was speechless. At first, they could not afford a single consolidating equipment scroll, but now they both had one. Moreover, they did not have to spend a cent. Binger wondered if it was a dream. She looked at Zhou Wei King and he winked at her. He looked innocent, but was incredibly cunning. Their luck was all thanks to him. Feng Yu directed them to different rooms to ensure their attributes did not clash during consolidation. It was Zhou Wei King's first time consolidating equipment, and Feng Yu offered to teach him how to do it. He thanked the man in advance. However, Feng Yu took it as payment for making the old master flustered. He revealed that he had a strained relationship with Senior Hu Yan and would not have been there without his vow to protect him. He asked Zhou Wei King to sit and take out the scroll. Zhou Wei King asked why there were so many scrolls in the box. Feng Yu explained that the scrolls were all for the Overlord Bo. There were 100 scrolls in the box because of their low success rate of consolidation, which was 1%. He instructed Zhou Wei King to activate his heavenly energy and move it to the physical jewel, then rest his right hand on the scroll and silently feel it. He did not need to do anything else. The physical jewel would naturally start communicating with the scroll under the stimulation of his heavenly energy. Zhou Wei King carefully followed the instructions. When his palm made contact with the scroll, he felt a huge suction, and the heavenly energy flowed outward. The patterns on the scroll shone brightly, and a strange feeling spread over his whole body. It was like a strange power was swallowing his heavenly energy while sweeping across his entire body. The consolidating equipment scroll vanished instantly, warping into a bright light encircling his right wrist. Finally, he could see the image of a longbow in his mind. A strong sensation flew into the icy jade physical jewel in his right hand. The Alexandrite cat's eye jewel also appeared. When Zhou Wei King started the consolidation, the dial unexpectedly spun at top speed. The black and gray colored sections twinkled brightly, absorbing the heavenly energy from his body. His heavenly energy consumption dramatically increased. When Zhou Wei King closed his palm around the physical jewel, two bright lights simultaneously shot out of his palm in two directions, and in the next instant, it had changed into a 1.5-meter longbow without a bowstring. Feng Yu was shocked and asked whether Zhou Wei King was even human. The boy had succeeded in consolidating on his first try. Feng Yu found it to be too abnormal. 
Zhou Wei King had a nagging suspicion that his success was due to his elemental jewels dial. He thought it best to keep that little secret to himself. He mischievously asked if he could keep the remaining scrolls since he had succeeded on his first attempt. Feng Yu laughed heartily and said he favored the boy because he was not fake. A villain who shows his true colors is better than one who hides them. Furthermore, Zhou Wei King was not a villain. He was curious about who had taught the boy to be so crafty. Zhou Wei King laughed nervously and admitted that he could not say. Senior Hu Yan noticed that Zhou Wei King had returned early. He assumed the boy had been unsuccessful and asked him to return and keep trying. Zhou Wei King chuckled with a twinkle in his eye. Senior Wind reported that they had met a true talent on that day. The boy succeeded in using the consolidation equipment scroll on his first attempt. Senior Hu Yan was pleasantly surprised. He was quick to ask for the 99 remaining scrolls to be returned. Zhou Wei King argued that gifts cannot be taken back. Feng Yu laughed and said it was not the old master's day. Senior Hu Yan wondered whether he was facing divine punishment. He gave up and asked the boy to show him his elemental jewel. He wanted to confirm that it possessed the spatial attribute. Afterward, he would accept the boy as an apprentice. Zhou Wei King declined in such a natural way, making Senior Hu Yan ask what else the boy wanted. Zhou Wei King teased him for being hasty. He added another condition for becoming the old master's apprentice. His freedom could not be restricted. Senior Hu Yan angrily shouted that he had never seen such a brazen disciple. Zhou Wei King retorted that he had never seen someone as stingy as the senior. Feng Yu sniggered. The master then ordered him to handle all the elemental jewel skill storing and consolidating equipment for the duo. Feng Yu agreed to do so until they attained six jewels. It was better than idling around. Senior Hu Yan accepted the condition and asked to see Zhou Wei King's elemental jewel. Zhou Wei King asked the old master to swear by his power jewels that he would accept him as an apprentice if he possessed the spatial attribute. He also wanted the master to swear to agree to all the discussed conditions. Senior Hu Yan sighed and said he had never met such a cunning boy. He then raised his left hand and seven elemental jewels appeared. Zhou Wei King was stunned. The old master had a high cultivation base with seven elemental jewels of the space attribute. Senior Hu Yan swore an oath by his power jewels and agreed to Zhou Wei King's conditions. He had grown impatient at that point and asked to see the heavenly elemental jewel. Zhou Wei King naturally had a flair for the dramatic, so he asked the two men standing before him not to be too intimidated. Zhou Wei King revealed his Alexandrite cat's eye heavenly jewel and released a brilliant aura. Both seniors, Hu Yan and Wind, exclaimed in surprise. Feng Yu hurriedly asked Zhou Wei King to hide it. Senior Hu Yan was quick to form a soundproof barrier with his heavenly energy. He could not believe such an elemental jewel existed. Its existence was miraculous. He held Zhou Wei King's left arm and asked whether the jewel had a wind attribute besides the spatial one. Zhou Wei King happily replied affirmatively and asked how the old master knew. Senior Hu Yan was shocked beyond words. The boy had dual attributes, wind and space. The old master's body trembled slightly. He then laughed hysterically. After a while, Zhou Wei King sighed and wondered whether the old master was having a fit. Feng Yu explained that the old master was experiencing a mixture of many emotions. Envy, jealousy, and hate. He never expected the Alexandrite cat's eye jewel to exist. Senior Hu Yan had gone crazy, having accepted a disciple who possessed it. Feng Yu said that considering Zhou Wei King possessed wind and spatial attributes, he was born to be a consolidating equipment master. Once Senior Hu Yan had gathered his wits, he addressed Zhou Wei King as a treasured disciple. He wore a silly grin and said he would not mind going bankrupt to have the boy as a disciple. Zhou Wei King playfully congratulated the senior for getting a talented disciple. Senior Hu Yan laughed and asked the boy to be modest. Zhou Wei King said his other teacher taught him to be proud of himself. Otherwise, no one else would be proud of him. Senior Hu Yan's eyes narrowed as he asked about the boy's other teacher. Zhou Wei King explained that he had a teacher for the past two years. However, it was before he awakened his heavenly jewels. He asked whether there was a restriction on the number of teachers he could have. Senior Hu Yan noted that since the boy had recently awakened his heavenly jewels, he was not yet 16 years old. Zhou Wei King was required to be at least 16 years old to start creating consolidating equipment scrolls. Otherwise, his body would not be developed enough to control the material. Zhou Wei King said he would turn 14 in a few months. The two seniors were astonished. Zhou Wei King explained that he had matured early. Senior Hu Yan was shocked because the boy was only 13 years old, yet he knew how to play dirty tricks. He was concerned about what the boy had learned from his other teacher. 
Zhou Wei King defended himself, saying he was a good and proper person. Senior Wind sniggered in response. Senior Huyan asked whether anyone besides Binger knew about his Alexandrite cat's eye. Zhou Wei King pondered for a moment and replied that there were two others. Both seniors had serious expressions. Senior Huyan said they needed to kill the two individuals to prevent any potential information leaks. Zhou Wei King teased and asked whether he wanted to commit suicide. They were the two people he had been referring to. The seniors sighed awkwardly. This kid played too much. Senior Huyan shouted at Zhou Wei King to speak clearly. He warned the boy against revealing his elemental jewel until he was strong enough, with at least six jewels of each type. Otherwise, he would encounter two types of people, those who would do anything to recruit him and those who would do anything to eliminate him. Zhou Wei King agreed and said he knew geniuses were the subject of envy and jealousy. He asked the old master if he had heard of another place that had someone with his elemental jewel. Senior Huyan explained that the Alexandrite cat's eye had appeared before on Heavenly Jewel Masters. Those who possessed it were generally eliminated, and those who weren't were well hidden. Feng Yu explained that Heavenly Jewel Masters were far superior to any ordinary Jewel Master of the same rank. He encouraged the boy to work hard. Senior Huyan said Zhou Wei King would return to the military once Binger finished consolidating her new gear. The Heavenly Bow Empire was not at war, so the military was a good place to hide his elemental jewel with the commander's protection. Senior Huyan would naturally fetch him when he turned 16 and teach him how to make consolidating equipment scrolls. Zhou Wei King agreed to the suggestion. He would have two years with Binger by his side. Senior Huyan made Zhou Wei King promise that all future consolidating equipment scrolls would be approved by him before they were used. Zhou Wei King assured the old master that he would not buy such scrolls when he could get them for free. Moreover, he was flat broke. Senior Huyan warned that the matter was important for the boy's future. He resorted to tempting the boy to get his attention. He asked Feng Yu to flex. Feng Yu release a dense, fiery aura along with nine crimson-colored jewels. Zhou Wei King was surprised by the overbearing display of power. Brilliant streams shot from the jewels and gathered at various spots on his body. There was another brilliant flash, and before Zhou Wei King stood a majestic figure. Feng Yu looked like a god of war in his battle armor. Zhou Wei King was mesmerized. Before him stood a man clad in a full set of consolidating equipment armor. Even Feng Yu's feet were clad in armor. Senior Huyan explained that the five pieces of consolidating equipment armor could be considered weak. However, when combined, they became formidable. That was the deepest secret of consolidating equipment armor sets. When a jewel master used multiple consolidating armor pieces, they communicated. The result would be a superimposed protection range, but the effect required a consolidating equipment master from at least the Grand Master realm, such as Senior Hu Yan, to accomplish. However, even he could make five or six pieces that could be used together. The more armor pieces one had, the stronger they all became. Only god-level consolidating equipment masters could create an armor set of ten pieces. Senior Hu Yan explained that Zhou Wei King currently possessed the Overlord Bow, and he could possess at least 11 physical jewels to consolidate equipment in the future. Therefore, he ought to choose his consolidating equipment carefully to get his armor set. He could not afford to waste any physical jewels. Zhou Wei King's eyes shone with obsession. That was precisely what he needed. A highly defensive armor to protect his life. The consolidating equipment armor set was perfect for him. Senior Huyan explained to the boy that he did not need to care about the consolidating equipment scrolls. All he needed to do was focus on cultivating hard for the next two years. Zhou Wei King agreed without hesitation. He assured the old master that he would have practiced hard, even if he was not told to do so. Senior Huyan asked him to return to the room and cultivate because the commander would require a few days to complete consolidating her equipment. Zhou Wei King waited till the evening and went to check on Binger. Unfortunately, she did not consolidate her equipment on the first day. Zhou Wei King told her the truth about his success which greatly surprised her. He described the entire process in detail, including the involvement of the dark and evil attributes. He also disclosed everything Senior Hu Yan had told him, including their agreed-upon conditions. However, Binger was from a poor background and did not want to exploit the boy. So she rejected his offer for free consolidating equipment scrolls. Zhou Wei King understood that he had no choice but to give up, but within his heart, his admiration for her increased. He asked whether the commander could lend him 2,000 gold coins. She asked what he wanted to do with the money, and he explained that he wanted to buy his own stored skills. 
He wanted to test whether his dark and evil attributes would superimpose again to help him store a skill for his elemental jewel. If that happened, he might also successfully store a skill on the first try. Binger approved the experiment and asked to accompany him the following day. In another cottage room, Senior Hu Yan asked when Feng Yu intended to take the boy to get a stored skill. Feng Yu said he did not think the boy should go skill storing presently. Rather, they should wait until he had two sets of jewels so that he could get them both at once. He explained that the kid's personality would make it hard for him to hide his Alexandrite cat's eye. Therefore, it would be better to wait two years until he got his second set of jewels. Senior Hu Yan found it logical. The boy was probably an archer for the military, which was perfect for him. His elemental jewel could have more than three attributes. He only forgot to ask what the other attributes were. Feng Yu said it was better that they did not ask for the time being. Too much excitement in one day was not good for the body. The two men did not know that Zhou Wei King had already made plans. Zhou Wei King went to rest in a cheerful mood. He had obtained great benefits on that day. If he could successfully store a skill on his first try, he would have a skill and the overlord bow. Both would be enough to defend himself. He felt like he was finally becoming a real heavenly jewel master. Binger was also a heavenly jewel master. Even without his family background, he was finally worthy of her. However, it seemed that she was getting tired of seeing him act roguishly all day. She would get sick of him if he continued to act that way. On the morning of the second day, Zhou Wei King started to change his attitude to win over Binger. During meals, he was very serious. He did not use his normal roguish tone even once. Senior Hu Yan had only recently met him, so he did not notice the difference. But Binger was surprised by the change and thought she mistook him for someone else. On their way to the city, she asked whether he was all right. He replied that he was and asked whether something was wrong. Binger said it was nothing. She could not take the initiative to ask why he had not trash-talked anyone. Considering the commander's reaction, Zhou Wei King's plan was working. As they approached the skill-storing palace, he asked about the process. Binger explained that nine entrances led to their respective heavenly beast enclosures. They were wind, water, earth, fire, light, dark, spatial, and life. And the ninth entrance led to a special enclosure with heavenly beasts possessing unique abilities. The beasts were divided into three stages, just like heavenly jewel masters. The Shai stage, Zun stage, and Zong stage. She explained that it would cost 500 gold coins per try in the Shuri stage area. The Zun and Zong areas would cost 2,000 and 10,000 gold coins, respectively. Zhou Wei King asked whether there was any difference between the skills he could obtain from the different areas. He wondered whether the skills were better, the stronger a heavenly beast was. Binger explained that elemental skills were at their lowest level when first stored, but would get stronger with the increased number of elemental jewels. She recommended that he store the skills of heavenly beasts of the same rank as himself. If he tried storing the skills of a beast at the Zun stage, the probability of success would be low. A 1 in 10,000 chance. The success rate of the Zong stage was even lower, 1 in a million. Zhou Wei King asked whether she wanted to accompany him to store new skills, but she declined because of the low odds and the limited money. She recommended that he should try the method he had mentioned previously. Zhou Wei King then asked to borrow 10,000 gold coins. He promised to repay the amount in full. Binger was surprised and asked if he intended to try a Zong stage beast. The boy had a confident expression as he said it would be enough to experience seeing a Zong beast. Binger gave him a card containing 50,000 gold coins. Regardless of success or failure, the amount would be enough for five attempts. Zhou Wei King chose the Zong stage wind attribute skill storing enclosure and asked the staff about the skill storing method. Before quoting the price, the attendant asked whether he was certain about his choice. Zhou Wei King offered the payment card and said he only wanted to experience the feeling of being near a heavenly beast. The attendant said Zhou Wei King could do as he pleased as long as he paid. He had at most four hours within the enclosure, and the money would not be refunded if unsuccessful. Zhou Wei King paid and entered the beast enclosure. He left in less than an hour with a look of frustration. His body trembled as he said the Zong stage beasts were too scary. All his heavenly energy had been expended. The attendant cautioned him not to strain himself. 10,000 gold coins was a large amount of money to spend, even if one was rich. He recommended that Zhou Wei King should enter the sure stage area so that he could have a higher chance of success. Zhou Wei King appreciated the advice. He walked out of the skill-storing palace with a look of defeat. He walked until he had completely left its vicinity, then his expression changed. 
His face lit up with all the joy and excitement he had been withholding. He clenched his left fist in celebration but soon stopped himself before he drew much attention. He had successfully obtained the skill of a Zong stage beast on the first attempt. He could enter the skill-storing palace four more times with his 40,000 gold coins. Having gained experience, Zhou Wei King visited the skill-storing palace in the following days. He entered a new beast enclosure every day except on the final two days in which he visited the same one. Five days later, he had spent 50,000 gold coins. Afterward, he cultivated diligently in his room within Senior Huyan's cottage. Binger finally consolidated her wind-wielding boots. Zhou Wei King realized his abnormal speed in consolidating equipment. The pair bade farewell to Senior Huyan and Feng Yu and left for the Heavenly Bao Empire. While staying at Senior Huyan's place, Binger avoided asking Zhou Wei King about his skill storing. Along the way, she finally asked if the boy was successful. Zhou Wei King avoided giving any direct answer while maintaining a serious attitude. Compared to before, he was acting like an entirely different person. Binger could not tell whether the change was good or bad. She did not realize that she had fallen into Zhou Wei King's trap. He had wanted that result all along. Zhou Wei King prepared all the food on the way back. Although he spoke with Binger a few times, he seemed different. The strange atmosphere lasted ten days until they returned to the barracks. Captain Xiao intercepted their arrival. His face was expressionless as he addressed the commander. Binger asked how the training of the recruits was faring. Captain Xiao replied arrogantly, asking the commander to inquire from the relevant officer. Binger sternly reminded the captain that she was his superior. However, Captain Xiao retorted, saying the commander had been absent for two months without authorization. He mentioned that he had reported the matter to the army headquarters. If the recruits of the 3rd Battalion were defeated in the fresh recruit tournament, the commander would likely lose her position. He turned to leave as he said heavenly jewel masters had great talent, but were not necessarily talented in military command. Binger remained silent. Zhou Wei King saw the suppressed anger in her expression and confronted the rude captain. Zhou Wei King called the captain a gigolo and asked how he dared to bully his Binger. Binger held his hand to stop him. She asked him to refrain from acting impulsively. However, Zhou Wei King protested adamantly. Binger explained that Captain Xiao was the only son of the Empire's finance minister, Marquis Xiao Yunchen. It was because of his background that she tolerated him. Zhou Wei King was stunned. He knew the other title of that influential figure. He was called the God of Wealth. When Binger asked if he knew the Marquis, he nervously denied it. He hurriedly explained what the people of the Empire said about two of their most influential people. That was too close. He almost slipped. Binger said she did not blame the captain for treating her poorly. Before she joined the army, the position of battalion commander was open. Although the captain was not a heavenly jewel master, he was extremely talented in commanding. He was once considered the best candidate until Binger snatched the opportunity. That was why the captain felt uncomfortable. His company was also the 3rd Battalion's trump card. Zhou Wei King quietly wondered when Uncle Xiao had a son. Memories of his childhood flooded his mind. He played with someone he considered an older sister as a child. At that moment, he realized the captain, Xiao Se, was his childhood friend, Xiao Ru Se. She had become a soldier and dressed up as a man. They did not recognize each other after many years apart. Binger asked what he was smiling about, but he quickly changed the subject and asked about the Fresh Recruits Tournament and whether he could compete. Binger replied affirmatively and explained that the competition was held after the recruits completed training. The various companies they belonged to would compete against each other. The goal was to identify the most talented people. For example, the best recruit would be directly promoted to squad leader. Captain Xiao ascended the ranks in that manner. Binger allowed Zhou Wei King to compete. However, he was not permitted to use his heavenly jewels. Zhou Wei King said he too had a condition. Binger saw his sly smile. The boy seemed to be back to his old self. When she asked what condition he had, he first asked to borrow her purple dawn bow. If he won the tournament for their third battalion, he wanted to call her by her name directly when no one else was around. Binger agreed to his condition reluctantly. Zhou Wei King excitedly promised to do his best. He quickly turned to leave. There were only three days left to the tournament. He wanted to practice archery. Binger was skeptical about his last-minute practice, but he assured the results would speak for themselves. All the battalions and companies stationed at Heavenbow City assembled for the tournament three days later. The battalion commander, Binger, sat among her peers in the army and watched with great anticipation. She could see Zhou Wei King from where she sat. He was clad in the standard 3rd Battalion uniform. He wore the armor he bought underneath the uniform. 
His left hand firmly gripped the purple dawn bow lent to him by Binger. She wondered about the extent of Zhou Weiking's fear of death when she noticed the armor he wore. Binger stood and gazed at all the gathered troops. She made a brief statement before introducing herself. There was some bustling noise from the ranks below. They knew who she was and admired her for being the top beauty of the Empire. Some soldiers even wished they had joined the 5th Regiment's 3rd Battalion because of her. Zhou Wei King raised his eyebrow as his expression turned smug. He knew those soldiers would be envious of him if they knew he was the commander's aide. Binger continued with her speech. She welcomed all the recruits into the 5th Regiment and announced that the results of their three-month training would be tested. The recruits who showed great potential would become squad commanders. She then ordered them to prepare to start. The battalion split into squads of 100, making 10 teams, each led by squad commanders. The 10 teams represented the 10 battalions of the 5th Regiment. There were four archer battalions, four light infantry battalions, and two heavy infantry battalions. The content of the tournament was simple. The heavy infantry needed to face off and charge against each other without weapons in a contest of pure strength. The soldiers who were pushed back or fell would lose. It would continue until only one man was standing. The archery battalions would split into squads of 200 and shoot arrows at each other from a distance of 200 yards. The arrows they would shoot at each other were blunted and coated in lime to leave an obvious mark when someone was hit. If one were hit, they would be eliminated. Company leader Mao Li led Zhou Wei King's battalion. Although he was good at leading, he was aware of the disadvantage his battalion faced. It did not have as many talented archers as its opponents. Zhou Wei King shook Mao Li from his thoughts and asked to be shown all the talented recruits on the opponent's side. He said he would make a roll call. Mao Li was pleasantly surprised that the boy knew roll call. Those who used the term were archers trained by masters. It meant eliminating a target. It was clear to Mao Li that Zhou Wei King was no mere recruit. Mao Li complied with the request and pointed out Zhou Wei King's targets. Binger wondered what Mao Li was whispering. Captain Xiao interrupted her thoughts by asking which side she favored to win. Binger replied plainly that she had faith in their battalion and was confident in Mao Li's leadership. Xiao Se sneered and mentioned the surplus of talented recruits on the opposing side. The captain mocked Binger for her negligence. Binger could only glare at the captain before signaling the tournament's commencement. The archery recruits from both sides drew their bows, ready to fire. Zhou Wei King aimed with the purple dawn bow. He had a piercing gaze as if he could see through everything. The instant Binger gave the signal, a dense volley of arrows dotted the sky. The tournament was underway in full swing. Zhou Wei King released an arrow and dashed for cover behind his teammates. There was no other cover on the battlefield, so that was his most logical move. He would at least reduce the chances of getting hit. He intended to take advantage of the crisis to roll call the talented recruits Mao Li had pointed out. He darted back and forth like a vengeful wraith and quickly eliminated his targets. He would take cover behind his remaining allies whenever one of them got hit by enemy arrows. His valiant display surprised Binger. He managed to roll call all the talented recruits in the 2nd Battalion by himself. Even Captain Xiao was shocked by his performance. He wondered why Zhou Wei King was so good at archery. Binger asked whether the captain still thought of her aide as unworthy. The other ranked officers could no longer keep silent. They were surprised to learn Zhou Wei King was her aide. They commended Binger for her keen eye for talent. A captain even asked Binger to assign Zhou Wei King to his unit, but she politely declined, saying a gentleman does not poach someone else's recruits. Xiao Se glared at Zhou Wei King on the battlefield. The captain was unwilling to lose to Binger. He clenched his fist and gritted his teeth. He had a wild look in his eyes. His ambition was great. To become the battalion commander, he had to take Zhou Wei King away from Binger. Zhou Wei King continued with the roll call and swiftly eliminated his targets. The captains that stood near Binger grew more astonished. The recruit was too fierce. Zhou Wei King's performance even drew the attention of the other squad commander. He wondered how his good archers had been taken out so quickly. His eyes scanned their opponent's ranks and landed on a valiant figure wielding a purple dawn bow. Zhou Wei King was hiding in the crowd after completing the roll call. The squad commander ordered his archers to focus their fire on the sly rat. Of course, he was referring to Zhou Wei King. After awakening as a heavenly jewel master, Zhou Wei King's intuition had grown sharper. He immediately noticed the lethal intent of the opposition and knew he was being targeted. He turned and ran away without a second thought. Even without his physical jewels, he was faster than ordinary people. A great volley of arrows had been released toward him. The captain beside Binger noticed that the 1st and 2nd Battalion targeted the boy. 
he was not confident that Zhou Wei King could avoid the combined bombardment. Binger, too, had a worried expression. Zhou Wei King was about to be eliminated. He sprinted to avoid enemy arrows. However, he did not seem to be fast enough. Just as the arrows were about to strike, he suddenly leaped, causing the arrows to hit the bare ground. He threw his body sideways and skidded to a halt. He drew the bow fiercely and eliminated two more archers. The opposing squad commander was exasperated. Not only did Zhou Wei King avoid the arrows, but he could also return fire. The squad commander realized how formidable his foe was and ordered his men to prioritize the elimination of Zhou Wei King's teammates. Zhou Wei King was growing more frustrated by the moment. He felt that his squad was useless. He had already eliminated more than 15 enemy archers alone. Yet so many from his squad had been eliminated. It was as if they were there to play. He quickly cast aside the thought and focused on reducing the opponent's numbers. The captain beside Binger remarked that it was a pity that Zhou Wei King had reached such a limit. The skills of the others in the 3rd and 4th battalions were not enough to grant them victory, even with Zhou Wei King's input. Binger continued to watch silently. After an arduous battle, Zhou Wei King was the only member of his squad left standing. The opponent's squad was still 50 men strong. Zhou Wei King complained that his squad had been unreliable. The opponent's squad commander laughed hysterically at Zhou Wei King's current predicament. Zhou Wei King was uneasy. He had to prevail against insurmountable odds. His foes outnumbered him, and he had nowhere to hide. He shouted in anger when he saw the cloud of arrows flying toward him. Even against one opponent, they went overboard. They were just too shameless. He turned and ran outside the range of the arrows. The opponent's squad commander ordered his men to pursue and shoot him down. Zhou Wei King sprinted and turned to return fire, eliminating two more opponents. At that point, the enemy archers sprinted after him to reduce the distance. Unbeknownst to most observers, the skill utilized by Zhou Wei King was a jump shot. His skill surprised the keen captain. Binger was impressed. Her face lit up when she realized the tactics that Zhou Wei King was deploying. The range of the Purple Dawn bow was far greater than that of normal bows, and his physical strength was excellent. He was able to outrun his opponents. Zhou Wei King eliminated a few more archers and sprinted to maintain the distance. His hand reached into his quiver only to realize that it was empty. His situation had become even more precarious. He resorted to using the loose arrows. A fresh volley of arrows had been released just in time. He would gather some arrows from it. His gaze turned fierce. He had decided to stake everything on a final counterattack. Zhou Wei King spotted a pile of loose arrows on the ground near him. However, he could not gather it because of the looming threat of the incoming arrows. It was the perfect opportunity to test his titanium wind hat. He sat and hugged his knees as the arrows bounced off his hat. He was impressed with the hat's ability to cover his entire body from arrows. The opponent's soldiers began cheering. Binger looked at the battlefield in disbelief. The captain beside him said Zhou Wei King would have picked off the opponents if he had not run out of arrows. There was no pride in the 1st and 2nd Battalion's victory. Suddenly a soldier was struck by an arrow and fell. The opponent's squad commander shouted at Zhou Wei King, saying he was going against the rules because he had already been eliminated. Zhou Wei King bore his arms like a true maestro, bold and unyielding. He retorted, asking when he had been shot. The opponents protested, claiming the boy was not willing to admit defeat. Another called him a cheater. Binger looked dazed but quickly snapped out of it and asked Zhou Wei King to stop. The boy argued that he had not yet lost and that the opponent's arrows had not touched him. The commander chided him. She said everyone had seen him get hit. Zhou Wei King unexpectedly smiled brightly and asked her to examine his wind hat. Binger was stunned. She approached the tournament grounds and examined the hat. She discovered that it was made of titanium alloy. Zhou Wei King explained that he had purchased it as part of his equipment. Therefore, he did not cheat. He had taken cover under the wind hat and was not hit by a single arrow. After his claim was validated, Zhou Wei King asked for a chance to eliminate the remaining opponents. The captain beside Binger declared that he was convinced the 1st Battalion he belonged to had lost the competition. He then tried to poach Zhou Wei King on behalf of the 1st Battalion. Captain Xiao Se grew more determined to separate Zhou Wei King from the battalion commander once he saw the boy's talent. If he did nothing, Zhou Wei King would become a threat to his plan. Binger asked Zhou Wei King to accompany her to watch the heavy and light infantry's competition. He instead suggested that she go ahead. He would stay back and rest. A hand suddenly grabbed Zhou Wei King's left arm. It belonged to Xiao Se. The captain had come to challenge Zhou Wei King to a duel. A slight smile appeared on Zhou Wei King's face. He could see how much Xiao Ru Se had grown over the years. He asked the captain how he wanted to compete. 
Xiao Se suggested an archery contest in the forest in the north. Whoever got hit first would lose. The loser would have to leave the army or the 3rd Battalion. Zhou Weiking smiled and mentioned his condition, although he withheld it. Xiao Se agreed to consider it if it did not involve his family or go against his conscience. Zhou Wei King promised not to ask for too much and asked the captain to lead the way. Binger looked at their departing figures with concern. She wondered where they were going. When they arrived at their destination, Xiao Se divided the training arrows in his possession such that each had fifty in the quiver. The captain explained that they would be one hundred meters apart and begin. Zhou Wei King and Xiao Se dashed to their respective vantage points. Zhou Wei King hopped onto a large tree branch. His eyes were narrowed with focus and determination. The thick star forest was the ideal place to test his new skills. His opponent was his childhood friend, big sister Xiao Ru Se. She would keep his identity a secret if she found out. A dense black aura surrounded Zhou Wei King. The world looked like it had been drained of all color for a moment. Something akin to a dark shadow spread from Zhou Wei King's hand and rapidly covered the tree. It was his elemental jewels stored skill of the darkness attribute, touch of darkness. The dark silhouettes traveled along the tree trunk and spread over the ground like vicious tentacles. Zhou Wei King had a confident expression. As long as Xiao Ruse entered the radius of his skill, she would be trapped, and he would be the victor. Ten minutes had passed by, and the forest remained silent. Zhou Wei King felt disappointed. He did not know what to do. The captain was too cautious. He did not make a move, so she did not attack either. Zhou Wei King knew that waiting her out wasn't possible. His touch of darkness had a heavy consumption of heavenly energy. He had no choice but to deactivate it. If the captain did not want to take the initiative, he would have to bait her out. Zhou Wei King broke a piece off a small branch and threw it as a test. The twig landed on the ground, but there was no movement. He wondered whether she had fallen asleep. He quickly dismissed the thought as he peeked from behind the tree. Xiao Ruse had been in the army for many years. A tactic as simple as his would not fool her. Zhou Wei King chose the direct approach. He took a deep breath and loudly called to the captain. Suddenly an arrow covered in dense heavenly energy flew toward Zhou Wei King. He jumped off the tree to avoid the impact of the arrow. He was surprised by her use of heavenly energy despite not being a heavenly jewel master. His heart filled with dread when he felt the arrow's power, even after avoiding it. He had not yet landed on the ground when a volley of arrows flew toward him at an incredible speed. They were rapid-fire and double-salvo arrows concurrently. Zhou Wei King realized how much danger he was in and decided to change his location. The captain had unleashed some high-level techniques that were difficult to master. He quickly took cover behind the trunk. Zhou Wei King gritted his teeth. She knew his exact position. An arrow flew toward his face when he tried peeking from behind the tree. He was pinned down, unable to move or shoot. However, he was not helpless. He could still rely on his heavenly energy. He teleported from his original spot and hit behind yet another tree. He could finally fight back now that he had some room to breathe. Zhou Wei King had her approximate location, but could not pinpoint it unless she moved. If he revealed himself, he would be pinned again. Suddenly, he had an idea. He could use the Overlord Bow. His icy jade physical jewel emerged and released a stream of light which condensed into a magnificent bow. Zhou Wei King recalled that Senior Hu Yan said the Overlord Bow had a widespread firing effect. As he drew the bow, the training arrow was turned into a dark energy bolt, surrounded by spatial fluctuations. He had enchanted the arrow with his touch of darkness skill to restrain his opponent. His combined skill took a heavy toll on his heavenly energy reserves. He released the arrow. It flew at an incredible speed toward his opponent's approximate location. There was a terrifying explosion on impact. Zhou Wei King was shocked. The attack was too powerful. It was like a cannon. He rushed toward the impact site as the dust slowly cleared. The explosion had formed a small crater and within it was Xiao Ru Se. His skill had immobilized her. She struggled against her restraints to no avail. She asked in shock whether he was a heavenly jewel master. Zhou Wei King had successfully captured her. Zhou Wei King stood triumphantly at the edge of the small crater and declared his victory. The captain demanded to know whether her restraints were a jewel skill. She asked if the young man who had bested her was a jewel master. Zhou Wei King revealed his physical jewel and had a slight smile. He said it would be more accurate to call him a heavenly jewel master. The captain was shocked by the revelation. She gritted her teeth in frustration. He was yet another heavenly jewel master who had appeared in her way. Something had become clear to her at that moment. Unsurprisingly, the battalion commander, Shang Guan Binger, had made him an aide. The captain shut her eyes in resignation. She could not beat him at all. 
The captain grew vigilant when Zhou Wei King approached her. He pinched her cheeks a little bit. She protested in vain and could only scowl. Zhou Wei King smiled innocently and called her by her real name, asking why she was making such a face. Xiao Ru Se was speechless, her eyes filled with disbelief. Zhou Wei King said she could not fool him. He knew Uncle Xiao only had one daughter. He then said his real name. Xiao Ru Se was dumbstruck. She could not believe her eyes. Zhou Wei King assured her of his identity. He seemed to enjoy the surprise he had given her. They had not met in seven years. Zhou Wei King did not know that she had joined the military. Xiao Ru Se's eyes teared up slightly. She was happy to see the little brat she knew a long time ago had finally grown up. She could not recognize him. Zhou Wei King's eyes teared up as he said he had missed her. Naturally, the conversation veered toward how Zhou Wei King had managed to join the army despite being underage. Zhou Wei King replied that he could lie about his age if she could dress as a man. She blamed him for breaking her bow despite recognizing her, but he quickly explained that he had not yet recognized her. The two sat and talked about their experiences. Zhou Wei King explained that he ran away from home and awakened his heavenly jewels while in the army. He trusted her and told her everything from the beginning with the black jewel. Xiao Ru Se laughed when she heard about Binger becoming a sacrifice. She considered her previous grudges with the commander settled. Shang Guan Binger had snatched the position of battalion commander from her, despite knowing nothing about commanding an army. Zhou Wei King shared about how well Binger treated him. They both agreed that the commander was a genuinely kind person. Xiao Ru Se asked why Zhou Wei King did not inform his father about his awakening. He replied that his life would become a nightmare if his father discovered it. She teased him by saying she knew his awakening was not why he refused to return home. It was because he did not want to leave Binger. The boy did not deny it. He asked Xiao Ru Se to stop targeting Binger, and she promised never to do so again. The two spoke as if no time had passed since they last met. Xiao Ru Se smiled to herself. The lad had fallen in love with Binger. Suddenly, Zhou Wei King felt a strange sensation within his body. The captain called to him in confusion. She wondered what was happening to him. He had fallen to his knees and clutched his chest, expressing discomfort. Black lines appeared on his face again. Xiao Ru Se asked if his sensation was related to his awakening. She then noticed the black lines on Zhou Wei King's face. He gritted his teeth, unable to withstand the overwhelming sensation, and let out a deafening roar as a pillar of dark energy erupted from his body. The captain hurriedly asked him to focus his heavenly energy and use it to calm his internal breathing. She knelt and hugged him, asking him not to be afraid. She offered to allow him to bite her if it would make him feel better. Zhou Wei King wailed in agony with his eyes shut tightly. Xiao Ru Se called to him with great concern. A figure quickly appeared close to them. It was shrouded in a powerful aura. The battalion commander, Shang Guan Binger, had arrived. She called to Zhou Wei King, asking whether the roar belonged to him. She was surprised to find the captain hugging Zhou Wei King. The black lines were the same as the striped tiger tattoos that appeared at his awakening. Zhou Wei King's eyes flew open and glowed with a savage light. He broke out of the captain's embrace and dashed toward Binger like a starving beast while a dense black aura surrounded his body. Binger had an anxious and fearful expression. She wondered why Zhou Wei King had re-entered that state after awakening. She was not certain that the boy would regain his senses this time. Zhou Wei King pounced on her and grabbed her. He roared once more as Binger shouted for him to snap out of it. He pinned her to the ground as she loudly asked him to stop. Binger noticed that this time things were different. Zhou Wei King gritted his teeth in pain and did not have lethal intent. She wondered what was happening to him at that moment. Zhou Wei King had taken Binger as a sacrifice to awaken his heavenly jewel. She had become a special existence for him. When he hugged her, their auras merged, and the power from both her heavenly jewels helped alleviate his pain and stabilize him. Zhou Wei King grabbed Binger and hugged her by instinct. The black markings on his face and body gradually started fading. As Binger watched, only his right leg retained the black markings and aura as if absorbing some power. The black jewel was the cause of his condition. Binger was finally relieved when he realized the boy's awakening was unlike the first. The process of absorption was finally completed after a long time. Zhou Wei King passed out while still hugging her. Binger realized his body had become limp and motionless, and attempted to wake him. Xiao Ru Se snickered and asked Binger to handle the situation alone because Zhou Wei King was her aide. Zhou Wei King opened his eyes and confirmed his surroundings before innocently asking why Binger had run into his arms. Binger looked irritated and did not hesitate to demand her release from his grasp. 
Zhou Wei King took the opportunity to attempt to negotiate with the commander. He would not let her go unless she promised not to hit him. After bickering, Binger was back on her feet while Zhou Wei King hid behind the captain. She wondered when the two had become close. Captain Xiao took the initiative to mention their childhood friendship. Zhou Wei King said he only recognized the captain's identity once they could speak. Binger asked about his earlier loss of control. Zhou Wei King explained that he started feeling uncomfortable. Binger was skeptical and asked to check. Zhou Wei King said he had entrusted Captain Xiao with the details of his awakening. Binger spoke plainly, saying Zhou Wei King had likely entered a state known as the Demonic Change. She reminded Zhou Wei King of her explanation about heavenly jewel masters who awakened with the evil attribute. In a state of demonic change, the heavenly jewel masters went berserk. They receive a massive increase in power for a short period, but would lose their sanity. The skill-storing palaces of several empires collaborated and destroyed such heavenly jewel masters. Binger explained the reason for her concern. Captain Xiao asked to take Zhou Wei King back home, but he declined. He assured them that he did not enter that state of mind. If he had, they would have both been eliminated. After he regained consciousness, he felt that his body had evolved. He felt like he was absorbing some power. Zhou Wei King speculated that it could be a function of the black jewel within his body. The first time he awakened, he did not possess the strength to absorb all the energy, maybe because the black jewel was too formidable. Binger was relieved. She asked him to always be by her side. She would help restrain him if anything bad happened. Zhou Wei King had a playful smile when he promised never to leave her side. Binger angrily blushed. She had not yet allowed the boy to address her by her given name, yet he had done so of his own accord. She turned and left for the barracks. Zhou Wei King followed and winked at Xiao Ru Se as he waved. The captain sighed inwardly. The brat from long ago had grown into a crafty individual. Seven years had passed in a flash. At the camp, Binger tested the changes in Zhou Wei King's body. He did not acquire another set of jewels after the evolution. However, his strength increased significantly. He unintentionally broke the purple dawn bow he had been sent. The power in his right leg had increased more than the rest of his limbs. His speed and flexibility increased too. His right leg's power increased while his left remained almost the same. Naturally, his balance suffered. When he walked, he struggled to control his right leg. He would unintentionally take large strides and fall. After the test, Binger informed him that she would leave for the army headquarters to report the results of the recruitment drive. She asked him to continue cultivating while she was away. After Binger left, Zhou Wei King went to see Captain Xiao. His eyes narrowed when he had the idea to surprise her. His body was immediately enveloped in a bright aura and vanished from the spot. He had activated the teleportation skill using his Elemental Jewel space attribute. He suddenly appeared inside the captain's tent while simultaneously announcing his arrival. Naturally, his timing was unique. He caught a glimpse of the captain half-dressed. She blushed in embarrassment as she yelled at him for arriving unannounced. Xiao Ruse was no longer in her masculine appearance. Her embroidered gown made her look elegant. She was furious with Zhou Wei King's behavior and called him boorish. The boy was quick to apologize. He explained that he had come to show off his jewel skills. He then complimented Xiao Ruse for her great style and asked why she did not wear women's clothing often. She dismissed his last question and asked about his plans, since he had no intention of letting his dad know he had joined the army. He replied that in the army camp, he had the prestige of a heavenly jewel master and could stay with Binger as an aide. Captain Xiao playfully asked whether he had come to the army to pick up chicks. She asked about Princess Di Fu Ya, his fiancée. Zhou Wei King complained that he would have died had the black jewel not appeared. He explained that he had written a letter to his dad to help him break off the engagement. Xiao Ru Se smiled as she said the matter was not simple. Even if his father agreed, there was still the emperor to consider. He would surely force the marriage. Zhou Wei King stubbornly said he would rather run away and hide until the emperor gave up. The captain reminded him to be careful around people and hide his heavenly jewels. She explained that the heavenly Bow Empire would be in dire straits because of the increased political instability among the neighboring empires. Zhou Wei King understood that there would also be increased levels of insecurity. Captain Xiao said the Empire was lucky to have Zhou Wei King's dad around to deter their enemies. Zhou Wei King said they were stuck between two large empires. There was no escape route. The Emperor and his dad had done a fine job running the Empire. However, the Heavenly Bow Empire's military strength was insufficient. They had to plan meticulously to survive. Xiao Ruse had a serious expression and looked into Zhou Wei King's eyes. She said anyone could die for the empire except him. 
Zhou Wei King was puzzled. Captain Xiao said there was only hope when he lived on. He was different from everyone else. He was the emperor's godson and the son of the famous Marshal Zhou. Moreover, he had awakened as a heavenly jewel master with infinite potential and talent. The captain expressed her belief that if Zhou Wei King got enough time to grow, he would have the ability to change the fate of the Heavenly Bow Empire. As long as he lived, he could revive the empire. Xiao Ruse believed the boy standing before her could surpass his father, Marshal Zhou, and no one would threaten the empire. Zhou Wei King nodded with a look of determination. The captain asked him to relax because she had only pointed out the worst-case scenario. The next morning, the soldiers of the 3rd Battalion prepared to march toward the border. Captain Xiao reported their status. Binger smiled and said they should depart immediately. The troops marched like a conquering force over the plains and hills of the Empire. Binger and Zhou Wei King each rode a horse. Zhou Wei King asked to be allowed to take a walk. He promised to keep up. Binger allowed him to do so only if he followed the main troop. Since Zhou Wei King got his act together, Binger started to see him differently and treated him better. The boy had not yet adapted to the exaggerated power of his right leg. He needed a deeper understanding of the leg's ability, so he practiced with it. With a single kick, he fell a large tree. Zhou Wei King was astonished by the result. He had not yet used all of the leg's strength, yet the tree shattered. He also did not feel any pain. If he had to guess, the black jewel was probably the internal core of the huge black tiger. Every time he activated the savage form, he received the qualities of the black tiger. He did not know what the evil creature was, but it was certainly formidably and strong. He recalled that its tail was like that of a scorpion. He believed his leg's power was absorbed from the tail. Zhou Wei King started applauding the black jewel, saying it was far better than the Alexandrite cat's eye jewel, his trump card. For ten days, Zhou Wei King ran to the forest to train. Afterward, he gained some understanding of his new powerful leg. The days went by as the troops marched on toward their destination. Zhou Wei King rode silently beside Binger until he perceived movement within the forest. An arrow flew at a blinding speed toward him. He shouted to alert everyone. It was an enemy ambush. He pushed Binger out of the way, making the arrow sail past them and hit a tree. Binger was shocked. The enemy had used a silent tracking arrow. There was a clamor, and the soldiers hastily made battle preparations. Their enemy was a jewel master. Zhou Wei King was surprised by the sudden ambush when they were almost at their destination. The enemy swiftly attacked from the bushes. The figure of a burly man leaped forward to attack. His hooded companions wielded short blades and struck with deadly precision. These assailants had one thing in common. They were all jewel masters. Zhou Wei King spotted twelve physical jewel masters with his keen perception. Captain Xiao naturally took command of the soldiers. She ordered the heavy infantry to the front, archers to flank from the trees, and light infantry to flank and surround the enemies. Another silent arrow was shot toward the commander. Zhou Wei King pushed her out of the way again. He realized that the enemy had a hidden archer. While Zhou Wei King was distracted, the burly man attacked with a large war hammer. He was a powerful physical jewel master with great speed. Before Zhou Wei King could react, an arrow disrupted the mighty swing. The arrow belonged to an ally, Captain Xiao. She ordered the troops to protect the battalion commander because she was their target. Xiao Ruse ordered Zhou Wei King to eliminate the hidden archer while the remaining troops stayed to protect the commander. Zhou Wei King complied and activated his wind attribute to augment his speed as he sprinted into the forest. He dodged a silent arrow aimed at him and charged toward the enemy's approximate location. He drew his purple dawn bow and returned fire in an attempt to pin his enemy. He used the opportunity to close the distance. His technique was the legendary heaven soaring shot, which frightened his opponent. The enemy archer was not alone. Their companion insisted that Zhou Wei King should be taken down expeditiously. Zhou Wei King had spotted the enemy's precise location when another arrow flew toward him. He narrowly dodged it and felt the imminent danger. His opponent was a highly skilled sniper. He looked up in time to notice enormous fireballs descending upon him. At that moment, he re-evaluated his foes. He was facing a physical jewel master and an elemental jewel master. He realized that he would be eliminated if he held back. A stream of brilliance appeared in his hand and condensed into the overlord bow. He fired it at the incoming fireballs and pierced through them. The fireballs disintegrated on collision with the overlord bow's terrifying power. Zhou Wei King turned his powerful bow toward his concealed opponents. His arrow was enchanted with a dense aura and blasted away the ground it struck. The atmosphere was filled with plant and rock debris. The enemy archer was terrified and hurriedly asked his young master to hide. 
Zhou Wei King used a rapid firing technique and forced them to retreat. Once they had done so, Zhou Wei King reluctantly let them go. He had accomplished his objective. He rushed toward his company to help protect Binger. The enemy assassins had grown desperate because of the prolonged battle. They prioritized the commander's elimination over their safety. Binger was on the defensive. She was flustered and could only dodge the incoming attacks. Her inexperience at commanding was clear for all to see. She was gradually surrounded. Her thoughts were for the safety of her ordinary soldiers, who could not withstand the attacks of physical jewel masters. Captain Xiao ordered the soldiers to support the commander, who could not use her heavenly jewels. She noticed that the silent arrows had halted. Zhou Wei King had dealt with the archers, and Captain Xiao awaited his return so that the tide of the battle could be turned. Binger continued to dodge desperately until the burly assassin flanked her. She was suspended in midair and could not dodge. The assassin swung his warhammer ferociously. Just as Binger was certain she would be eliminated, a pitch-black arrow stopped the hammer's descent. Dark tentacle-like silhouettes bloomed at the point of impact and restrained a few assassins. Zhou Wei King had masterfully released his skill, Touch of Darkness. Binger used the opportunity to begin her counterattack. Her wind blades eviscerated her targets without mercy. An assassin panicked when he saw the combination of the darkness and wind attributes. His heart was gripped with fear, and he ordered his comrades to retreat. He thought the legendary Marshal Zhou Shui Niu was on the battlefield. The soldiers attempted to pursue their fleeing assailants, but were stopped by Captain Xiao because their enemies were physical jewel masters. The captain ordered the heavy infantry units to guard the commander and report casualties. She then reported to Binger that three assassins had escaped. Binger was relieved to have the captain beside her. She had used too much heavenly energy, and were it not for the captain's commands, the casualties would have been greater. Captain Xiao said Binger was not at fault. Rather, she had been the target. Zhou Wei King returned from his hunt and asked whether Binger was all right. Captain Xiao thanked him for his support and asked about the enemy archer. Zhou Wei King reported that the enemies were more skilled than himself, so he did not pursue them. A soldier returned with the casualty report. 72 soldiers were eliminated, 41 were seriously injured, and 100 had minor injuries. Binger could only express shock. Her face grew pale as her eyes lowered. She blamed herself. Zhou Wei King watched as her body trembled. After the assassination attempt, the army regrouped and arrived at their base on the front line in half a day. Shang Guan Binger did not utter a single word for the remainder of the journey. She blamed herself for the casualties due to her poor abilities as a commander. During the attack, she lost her composure. Zhou Wei King remained beside her and said nothing. He only looked at her with concern. The troops assembled in the military compound while Binger went to the headquarters to report. Zhou Wei King watched as she left the assembly grounds. Xiao Rusei asked him to rest and that Binger would be okay. In the distance, Two silhouettes stood before three others kneeling on the ground. The assassins were reprimanded for their failure. One assassin described the appearance of a skill that combined the darkness and wind attributes. He was certain that Heavenly Bow Empire's legendary marshal was guarding their target on the battlefield. A young man with blonde hair and engraved pauldrons dismissed the report and said no assassin would have escaped if that war god had been on the battlefield. The young man was the Kalis Emperor's ninth son, Bai Ju. Beside him stood his subordinate, Lu Xiaoye. Lu Xiaoye asked who the prince thought was fighting them in the woods. Their opponent seemed to be a heavenly jewel master. The prince explained that Heavenly Bow Empire seemed to have acquired another heavenly jewel master with the same attributes as the marshal. The Heavenly Bow Empire seemed to have been hiding its strength. The prince said seriously that he might have to beg his teacher to take action. At the 5th Regiment's headquarters, Binger had expressed her desire to resign from her post. The news was not taken well. She explained that she had realized her flaws which caused the army to suffer heavy casualties. She recommended Captain Xiao as one who was better suited for the position. The regimental commander had been preparing to report the elimination of six enemy jewel masters and the capture of two so that Binger would receive merits. Binger credited Captain Xiao for the victory. She asked her senior officer to comply with her request. The regimental commander promised to send her resignation letter to the main army headquarters for the higher-ups to decide. She asked the man to assign Captain Xiao as the temporary battalion commander because she would no longer participate in leading the 3rd Battalion. The regimental commander complied with her final request. Zhou Wei King lay down and gazed into space. The sun had long since set in the evening. He heard a familiar voice asking to be let into his tent. Binger walked in as he sat up to welcome her. The pair exchanged glances and said nothing for some time. 
Binger looked downcast. Joe Waking took the lead by asking what was wrong and inviting her to sit. Binger expressed her inability to lead the troops properly. Joe Waking comforted her by saying it was not her fault. No one could have anticipated such an ambush. Furthermore, their assailants were all jewel masters. Binger insisted on blaming herself, saying the casualties would have been far less if she had stayed composed. Seventy had been eliminated, and more were severely injured in one fell swoop. It was the first time she had seen so many casualties. Joe Wei King watched as her eyes filled with tears. He offered his shoulder to her. Binger gazed into his eyes for a moment. When she saw their sincerity, she no longer hesitated and leaned onto his shoulder, much to his surprise. Joe Wei King instinctively raised a hand to embrace her. However, she warned against it. Binger no longer withheld her tears and let them fall freely. She then said that her heart had been perpetually tired. Joe Wei King expressed empathy. He understood the burden she had to bear as the only heavenly jewel master apart from Marshal Joe. Not only was she required to cultivate and become powerful, but she also had to adapt to the military and lead it. Binger raised her teary eyes and said she was unafraid of hard work. However, she had always assumed that she could make up for her shortcomings in leadership with her strength. She covered her face and wept bitterly. Joe Wei King's expression changed into one of determination. He asked Binger to let him stand beside her through everything. She looked at him and saw eyes full of sincerity and confidence. At that moment, it seemed like those were the words she wanted to hear the most. She cast aside all her inhibitions and hugged him. 1,000 comments or 10,000 likes to get the next part faster. Join our Discord for the name. Donate to help us buy the license for the artworks.